Okay, so let's carry on with the build of, well, Falcon, ultimately. Um, but currently it's Inkscape we're targeting. Um, now, in, uh, Image Magic is the next package to build, but it's a runtime dependency, so I'm going to defer installing that because it's got quite a few dependencies. Um, then we've got, but there's quite a few others which are a little bit involved, such as Graphis and Gimps, probably. Um, quite a big dependency, I think Ghost Script is as well. Interestingly, it's got Inkscape as a dependency, so um, that's good that we're leaving it because it's a runtime, because it means that when we come to do Image Magic, Inkscape will be installed. So we'll skip over that one. We've got a little CMS2 installed. That's been done recently. Um, if I can find it, I thought it had been done. Right, I'll have to search for it actually in my list. Yes, it has been done probably about 50, 60 packages ago. Um, so we don't need to install LCMS1, so I'll move on to lib Canberra next, and that needs lib Vorbis. which needs lib og. So that's our next package for the looks of it. <coughs> Fetch that file and we can start extracting it and building it. In case there's no extra options, we can just build and install this immediately. Okay, that's done. So let's run some checks. All looks good. There's nothing failed there. So let's install. And it's done. Straightforward package. So libvorbis, so it can be rebuilt after text live, put documentation, I'll put a note in for that. Copy link address. Just copy this because we're not enabling documents. We haven't got the dependencies. So run some checks. And install. And that's the form is done. So next we need Alsa Lib, I think. Uh, did we do that one? Let's check. Oh yes, we've already done that. So GStream, I think, is the next one. Even though the yeah, even though the. Uh, Link is highlighted. Uh, right. G. Right, 
so my spreadsheet misbehaving. That's better, right. Okay. So let's go into that. G streamer. And it says you may need at least GS2 plugin space or one of the good and one of the good, bad or ugly libav plugins. Um, Jitter, we got, I think we installed GTK plus three. Yeah, it needs to be rebuilt as well. GS2, we've got lib unwind. So I think um, I won't go to GST plugins base until it's needed. Um, it does say that Canva just needs GStreamer. I'd expect it to list the other packages if it did need them. It does say this package only provides the base functionality and libraries, so that's probably all that LibCanva needs. Um, I would have thought it would have said like GStreamer plus the base plus the good plugins, for example, if, if they were necessary. So let's copy. Oh, I should have already have this because I was playing around with this. Uh, yep. So G streamer. Install it with these. So what I'm gonna do is build the direct temporary build directory first, copy the mise and set up and just look to see if there's anything to change. No there isn't at all. Okay, so I'll just press enter there. So it looks good. Then just to build it. Run the tests. Okay, we've got one failure, um, GST element. So that was actually a timeout. Um, I can't comment on why that failed, unless it does need some of the other um, dependencies, such as Valgrind, possibly, or if it needs... Um, for example, GST plugins base is a possibility, uh, but one out of 103 is not too bad, so I'll accept that. Um, yeah, I think I'll accept that. I suppose I could run it again if it's a timeout. See if it times out again. Might be a bit of an anomaly. It probably will fail in the same way. Well, it is a bit of an anomaly then. Okay, so it's past that time. So it's purely a timing issue. Okay, so let's install. It could be possibly something to do with the fact that the jobs are being run in parallel by the looks of it. And the tests are, or it's rather the tests are being run in parallel. Um, okay, I've seen this before. Not sure why that is. Uh, that may be possible, something to do with the file system. 
doesn't support capabilities. Uh, yeah, set cap. Um, just have a quick look at the kernel settings. So I go to file systems, ext4. Well, I thought it might have been an option here, but it didn't seem to be. So it could be uh, either another option in uh, the kernel or maybe a setting somewhere that hasn't been set. But um, as far as I know, I've not missed anything that needs to be set for the file system. So. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, these files are readable and executable by the world, so uh, as far as running them as a normal user is concerned, there shouldn't be any problem. Let's try running one of them. Oh, it's not been found. Oh, Libix exits in, that's why. So that's because that these programs aren't in the path, but should be able to run them directly. Uh, GST plugin scanner. No help. So I wonder what it does. It probably just runs. Um, but it's not coming back saying file not found, which indicates that it is actually running. So that's fine. Oh, and those executables aren't actually listed as executable. They could be scripts, in fact. That's quite possible. Uh, no, it isn't executable. So it could be they needed to be executed in a certain way or in a certain condition or by a certain user. So uh, I'm not going to be too concerned about that. So that's GStreamer. Now we can install libcanberra. And we've got a patch. audio missed that one. Oh, that's one we need to install right okay i think i've already actually installed that one myself uh sorry i mean uh tested it i haven't installed it yet so let's take a look at that next uh, gtk2 i think we've done that a long time ago Pulse Audio, what we've we got here. So lib sound file, I think we've done that, have we? Lib sound file. No, that's one we've got to do. So Let's do that one next. So this is a requirement. And this requires FLAC and Opus. LibVorpus we've done. Um, so let's get these two out of the way first. So FLAC. Uh, 
Let's remove the camera as I wonder what state it's in and I'll end up removing it anyway. So flak. So disable thorough test to allow it to complete in a reasonable time. Let's compile it with that option and see how quick those tests take. Um, it says they these ones will take 0.6 SPU, so that's quite quick. Let's run the tests. Okay, so I'm not sure if that was 0 0.6 SBUs. It's probably more like 6 SBUs, actually. Um, an SBU for this machine is half a minute, so I'd say that probably did take 2 or 3 minutes. So it's a little bit off. Um, for that reason, I don't think I'm going to enable the longer tests. I do use FLAC, and if I was using it in anger, in fact, I'm 
what I record now, what you're listening to now has been recorded in flat, uncompressed. Um, and if it was for something like this, something serious, I would run those exhaustive tests to make sure there were absolutely no problems whatsoever. But in this situation where I'm installing it just because of dependency more than anything else, um, I'm not going to bother, uh, especially as it looks like it could take quite a long time, as it says. So um, I'm going to install the package. There's no errors. And finish with that. So next we've got Opus. So there, right, that isn't copied again. Whenever I insert a line on my spreadsheet, it doesn't seem to copy the selection properly. Right, so we can reinstall this after text live. In fact, to be quite honest, I may, may start in thinking about installing Doxygen. Um, as several of these have Doxygen and Text Live together, so I don't know whether they're used in tandem or they're alternatives for building the documentation, or if they build different types of documentation. I'm not sure, but um, it's possibly something I might do. So Opus, we did that install. I've already downloaded it. Yes, I have. So let me remove the copy. Uh, so CD Opus. There's no other options. We'll just build it. some tests okay so that has all Past, um, so I think what I wanted to do is to install. Yep, and that's Opus complete. So back to lib sound file. Um, tell us who we did our so lib. I can't remember now. Oh yes, a long time ago, and uh, what else have we got? So looks like lame is a good one to do. So we've got the all right. So lib sound files and optional dependency but we're trying to build libsound file so I think what I shall do let's have a look at these two All right, that one's going to get involved Yeah, I think what I might do is to install libsound file now to allow lame to be installed with all its optional dependencies and then mark libsound file up to be rebuilt after mpeg and speaks have been installed so um, yeah let's fetch libsound file I'm not sure if I've already got this one actually 
have. So let's build this. Run some tests. Okay, that's all passed. So I'm just putting in some notes to rebuild after uh, lame. Peg one, two, three, and speaks. So let me now install this. So that's the first time round for the libsound file. So let's tidy that up. So I built that because of lame. So let's do lame next. So we've got a configure, we can add enable NASM to it because we've installed NASM and it says it allows, oh it has no effect on x, x8664 so it's only 32 bits so adding it in is going to be harmless but obviously if you are building on a 32 bit it is going to make a difference. It's interesting, it's complaining about GTK version not found. And yet it's not mentioned as a dependency. It's interesting. And the fact we've got GTK version 2. And GTK version 3 installed. Yeah, GTK config's not installed. So I don't know why. Why that. Maybe it's something that doesn't get installed. Uh, the way that GTK is built on Linux from scratch is possible, uh, especially as GTK is not mentioned here at all. So that's configured. Let's now build. That's done. Make test. And that looks like that's all complete. So now install it. complete. So lame has been installed with a libsound file dependency. So now we've got um, mpeg123 and that's got pulse audio dependency which we've installed. Already. No we haven't installed that yet so let's go to Pulse Audio next. So that needs lib sound file which we've installed. Also lib we've done dbar c login d g lib speak. So that's a dependency of lib sound file anyway. Yeah. So let's jump in the queue that one. 
we've got Libog, so yep, we can install this one now. Additional download. So it's two separate tarballs that need to be extracted and built independently. Install speaks by running the following commands. So the first one we need is the speaks one two one tar file. So there's no additional explanations for the configure command. So we can just put this in as it is. and install it and now we can build the speaks dsp package which again it's got all the commands for extracting we can just put those commands in and again install and that's correct. And just to double check, we were in the DSP at the end of that because there's no um, verbose option past the tar to ensure that we were actually extracting the right package. So now I need to tidy both of those up. So that should be. That. No extra directories I've forgotten to remove. So speaks is done. Next one we've got is FFTW. We've done a Vahi. Um, See what else we've got on the list. Uh, yep, so FFTW next. So this hasn't got any dependencies. Oh yeah, this is one we rebuild several times. So let's fetch this. And extract it. Oops. Uh, it says here we build it three times for for different libraries and different numerical positions, and mentions the different types. The first build is for double precision arithmetic. Um, there are no extra options, is there? All right, so it does mention enable threads in each of these, and then the enable SSE two AVX AVX two. They're also used. Enable float again, that's used where it's needed. Long double and AVX 512. Uh, that option AVX 512, it's not mentioned. So that's an optional. Uses optional. Uh, will be used on a CPU of AVX512 if this option is not compatible with the enable long double. So it looks like it's not compatible with that one. Um, it looks like it's similar to these ones actually. They're, they're used where long double is not used. So what I'll do, first of all is I'll check to see if this processor uses AVX512F and if it does I'll add them to the first two builds because they've got the AVX and SSE2 options but no uh, long double option but I won't use it on the last option. So best way to find um, 
Well, there's two ways you can do something called LSCPU, which should be installed as part of Core Utils, I believe. And you can grab that with, uh, say, 512. And you can see the AVX 512F is explicitly listed there. You can also do cat proc uh, CPU info and again grep, say 512. And you'll, what, the only trouble with doing it this way is you'll get a re response for each core you've got. So that means I've had 16 responses, one for each core. But again, you can see this is a similar output to LSCPU, it just summarizes it, it, summarizes it on LSCPU. Um, you can see there's the output there. So this particular processor does support AVX512. So I'll be using that extra option for the first two builds. So I'll put that in, add in the AVX512. And like it says as well, the build will know whether I'm lying or not. So let's see what happens when I run that configure. So if it actually reports what it's using. Okay, so it hasn't reported it at the end. Um, See if there's any checks here that are obvious. Yeah, there it is there. So checking with the well, it's checked to see if the compiler accepts it. So I assume if the processor didn't accept it for the compiler or it didn't match that it would have refused it uh, let's just check the wording this enables building the optimized routines using fftw will check if these routines can really be used on the current cpu when the fftw library is loaded oh i see okay so an fftw build with these routines can still be run on the CPU without AVX512. Use, use this option if the FTW build will be used. Right, okay, so basically it is the compiler, whether the compiler is capable, and then the library is capable of discerning whether the CPU can use that instruction or not. So um, you may as well set that regardless, unless you know specifically you're not going to be running this on a CPU with that that option. So let's run make check.
Okay, so that looks like it's tested okay. There's no errors been ejected. Oh, it does say passed all basic tests. So we can now install this first run. And that's done. So automatically want to remove the directory there, but don't remove it. Run make clean to clean the previous build. Copy these commands in and once again add enable AVX512 to the configure. Build it again. Okay, that was a little bit quicker that time. So now let's, uh, oh, there's no tests here actually. Well, that's strange. You would have thought you'd want to test again being as you've built it with different parameters. Um, let's see what happens. If they maybe break, I don't know. Okay, so that's in, uh, tested okay, so I'm not sure why the tests aren't specified to be run again. Um, the only thing I can possibly think of is maybe the clean doesn't clean the tests, um, but I find that hard to believe. Let's run it again. So that's installed. Um, yeah, the test directory, there's a test directory there that's deleted, so I'm not sure. Um, I can't imagine the assumption being that it's built with one set of parameters means it will run, uh, the test will pass on subsequent ones because the fact that different parameters means there's different code bars going to be used, so uh, I'm not sure why that's missing. Uh, maybe it's an omission. So this time we're just running configure by itself because as you remember, 
it says that the long double doesn't work with the AVX command, AVX 512 command. So we've configured, uh, let's just see what it's pulled back for the compiler. Uh, looks like it's not reported that this time. Yeah, I think it was here, so it's not even checking that this time. Uh, maybe because it hasn't been specified. But anyway, build that and I'll run the tests again. Okay, so that has built, a, uh, what was it doing, testing, wasn't it? Yeah, that's tested, okay. So now let's install it for the final time. And that's FFTW done. So that was FFTW GTK3, we've got lib sample rate. So that needs our, so we've got lib sound file we've installed and FFTW, so this is ready to go. This is a straightforward build. And run some tests. Okay, so that's all done, all passed. We can install it, and that's done. So lib sample rate SBC2 next for Bluetooth support. That just needs lib sound file, so this can go in as it is. So it looks like we can copy this as it is. There's no test suite, so we just install and it's done. So that looks like that's all that's needed for pulse audio uh, in terms of dependencies. So uh, I think I've already got this one. 
So yeah, it's already downloaded, so let's extract it. And start building it. So we've got a temporary build directory and a meson setup command. Let's see what other options we might want to take a look at. So it says prevents a runtime error if dbus and spc are both installed blues is not remove this if you installed all three package packages so i'm just going to double check that i've got blues installed if it's going to cause runtime yes i don't remember now i didn't set up the kernel um let's see what tools we've got yeah, Bluetooth control, so I can actually run that, and it's not going to work because A, the daemon's not running, I don't believe, and B, the kernel's probably not set up correctly, but the fact is the software is there, so that's okay. Um, and doxygen equals false, that's okay. So, yeah, I can actually just copy... Uh, well, I need to remove this blues 5 enabled, actually as it is installed and I'm going to go back and see what that warning was that happened quite early on oh, ok there's nothing to worry about so I'm just going to check this here so it has found GTK3 Yeah, it's found blues five the looks of it and some codecs so that although we've only installed gstream and not the base or any of the good bad or ugly libraries it's defaulted to true on that or gone to true that's interesting lib sample rate we've installed that and it's not found it and it is optional so that's probably an option i need to turn on Manually. So what I should do is um, examine the meson underscore options and look for, okay, uh, sorry, lib sample, not sound sample. There it is, sample rate. And it's defaults to disabled so I presume, oh right, okay, it says it's deprecated, so that's why, oh that's interesting, so it's optional but it's actually deprecated, so I would suggest that that should be actually removed from the optional uh, features there, because uh, that support could be removed at any time, so I won't adjust the meson setup, I'll leave it as it is, and just run Ninja to build it. Right, testing it says one test fails if they're not run as root user, but it can be ignored. Okay, again, we've got a uh, better pass rate than what's mentioned in the book. I'm wondering if it could be because we've got sudo without password access. It could be that um, that test that fails when not run it as a root user, it may be trying to become root via sudo. And because it's not failing, asking for a password, that's a possibility. It could be the reason why some of these tests are actually running better than what's mentioned in the book. So let's now install with Ninja install. Uh, running Pulse Audio as a system-wide daemon is possible but not recommended. So while as a root user, run that command. Okay. And some information there about configuring Pulse Audio.
so that's pulse audio complete let's update the spreadsheet uh, deadlib sample rate and pulse audio okay so we'll shut that one down now back to mpeg123 so now this needs this stl Oh yeah, I haven't opened it up in the tab, so STL one to compact. This needs glue, which needs Mesa, which we've obviously installed because we've got the GUI running. So I'll put glue in next. Fetch the package. And there's no other options, so I'll just copy and paste the build commands. And same with the install, just copy and paste that. And that's done. So next one's STL2. So it's got a few dependencies, libxkb common. Um, I think we've already done that one. Let's double check that one. XCB CLI should be there. No, it isn't. Okay. Uh, sorry, XKB. Yep, there it is, XKB CLI. So that has been installed. Wayland protocols we have done and XORG. So ALSA is needed. So this is a suite of programs that form ALSA. And as you've already seen, we've already installed ALSA lib. So um, there's no need to reinstall this. Uh, all the dependencies are already existing, so we can skip on to ALSA plugins. Um, FFmpeg we haven't got yet, and that's got quite a few dependencies. So let's jump into that. So we've got libaom, libas is the first dependency here. And we've done all these, so we can do libas next. Um, so if you didn't install font config you need to put that switch in but otherwise we've installed all the optionals just build it with the supplied instructions as they are so that's libs done Next in the list of dependencies, FDK AAC. So there's no dependencies for this package, so that can go in. So again, this is just a copy and paste to get this installed, built and installed. Okay, and do the actual install, and it's done. Um, 
free type we've done lane we've done lib theora next so these lib argon forbus we've got sdl one two compact so that's one we're trying to build and SDL2 is a requirement, so we can't carry on until SDL2 has been built. And we're building the libraries, right? So what I might do is install um, I've just noticed I forgot to rebuild libsound file actually to take um, uh, right, hold on a minute. I've made a little boo boo here. Oh, MPEG one, two, three. We haven't rebuilt. That's why. Okay. So, lip sound file rebuild after dependencies. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, what I might do is to build, because we've got all the recommended for SDL 1, 2, compact, I'll build that now to satisfy Libsiora, and then rebuild, um, sorry, not SDL, SDL 2, just get this right again, this SDL. All oh, right, I've clicked on the wrong one. SDL one two compact. Oh, I see that needs SDL two. Yes, I'll build SDL two now. So that provides SDL compact one two with its requirements, and then that will provide Theora with the optional. Uh, dependency of SDL 1, 2, and then I'll have to rebuild SDL 2 and SDL 2 compact. I think that's what I'll do. Just checking this makes sense in my head. Uh, So this needs, what have I got this still here, STL2. Oh, of course, because of the ALSA libraries, right, okay. So, yes, yeah, so I'll build STL2 next, let's put this in. Then, and that needs to be rebuilt. Rebuild after um, Elsa, iBus, and Pipewire. And after that, I'll do STL12 compact and Rebuild after SDL2 has been rebuilt. I think that should sort it out, and then I can do Libsiora. Yeah. Right. Okay, so SDL two first. Let's copy that. Uh, that's wrong. Copy link address.
Okay, so that's downloaded. Let's extract it. Capital letters SDL2. So there's a few extra options there. Let's see if we need to add to them. Uh, so disable ALSA shared, disables dynamically loading the ALSA shared libraries. So I'll leave that disable. So that doesn't sound like it's a good idea. Um, right, yeah, I think we'll uh, not add anything to that. Just run configure as it is. Okay, yeah, it's found that iBus is not installed. So that is a dependency that will be installed next time we build this. Let's just build it as it is. Okay, it says if you wish to build and run the package regression test, do not delete the static libraries below until after the tests are built. So um, we need to install it first with the looks of it. And then if you build the documentation, install it as the root user. Uh, we didn't build the documentation. No, we didn't. We haven't got Doxygen. So we move on to testing. If you wish to test the installation of SDL2 using the including test programs, none of the resulting binaries need to be installed. All oh, right, okay. So we could have tested it before, but let's run this as it is. That's strange if none of the resulting binaries needed to be installed. Why? The testing hasn't been put before make install, but uh, there you go. There must be some reason for it. So now that's, uh, looks like it's passed, I presume. There's... Oh, they need to be run individually, right, okay. And some need to be manually killed. Okay, maybe it's not a good idea to run this. Um, I'm not sure, I've, I have done this, but um, yeah, this, this, these do need a graphical front end, a lot of these, so um, I'm not going to bother running them at the moment. So what I'll do is just remove the static libraries as the root, and I'll leave it like that, and uh, hopefully the next time we build these will be in the graphical environment and we can test it properly. STL2, so tidy that up, so that's the first time we've installed that. Now we'll go to STL 12 compat. Oops. Fetch that. And install this. Uh, again, I wonder if this is just an early version of SDL, SDL1 maybe, but it, the testing is in a similar vein as individual test programs. Oh, I see, that's what it means by installing any of the resulting binaries, because those binaries call on the files that have been installed. And the binaries, it's referring to the test binaries. Okay, that makes sense now. Uh, so I'm not going to do that, so let's install this package and that's done so now we can go back to libtheora and install this oh is there any other dependencies just to reinstall after text live So let's copy this link. And we can 
can start building. So there's no other options to pass the configure. check all nine tests pass and we can oh, that's interesting why is that oh, must have copied a new line or something new line character um, if you wish to install this example so you can hack them through or install them as a root user so you may want to do that the root user so that's that there let's tidy up so that's libsyora done for now back to ffmpeg and we've got libvorbis libvpx so it looks like we've got all the options for this one. So let's install it. Again, my selection has failed. Copy link address. So what have we got? We can disable some things. This switch disables optimizations, allowing this build to package without NASM and YASM installed. So we've got both of those installed. So I'm just going to copy and paste the instructions as they are uh, after I've changed into the directory, of course. So I'll retry that. Okay, that's completed. So I can run the tests with this command here. Um, how long did I take? 15. Okay, so it might take a few minutes. So I'm going to time this and wait for it to build.
Okay, so all those tests have passed. And we'll install it now. Okay, that was nice and small. And that's it. Tidy up. And now we move on to uh, that was libvpx x264. Okay, that hasn't got any dependencies that are in the BLFS book. So let's download the package. Switch to servers building the command line encoder, which is redundant since it requires FFmpeg for most of the inputs. Okay, not sure how that, what that means actually, because um, although FFmpeg is not listed as a dependency, um, well, I suppose it's a cyclic dependency because we're building this for FFmpeg. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. We'll just accept it as it is. Very unlikely. I don't think you'd want to run it unless you know you do uh, from the command line. So that's built. Let's now install it. That's done. Move on to X265. So we've got the dependencies for this one. Like we just accept the defaults. That's done, so now let's install it and that's done. And move on to also lib we've done, libva we've done, got done that one, stl2 we've got installed. Optional Fribidi, I think we've done. Frail plugins needs gavel. Okay, so this looks like a good one to go for. So um, we'll just copy and paste this. We haven't got Doxygen, so we don't need to modify the configure command. OK, 
Okay, now let's install it. And that's done. Open CV. So we've got F uh, or recommended FFmpeg <coughs> and some optional. So we've got the requirements. I think this is going to have to be one that's installed after all these extra dependencies such as Java and Ant. Um, but for now. Yeah, let's build OpenCV as it is, and we'll have to rebuild it. So, rebuild after GST plugins base, um, Jasper. If I think we've done that one, Turbo Tiff WebP. I think we've done that. Let's check. Let's check these lib xif lib jpeg lib png tiff. We've got lib webp. Yeah. So. Uh, so Jasper um, V4L Utils Zinni Lib and Java. And numpy one dot two numpy. Okay, so let's fetch this. Uh, just notice something. Uh, star one. Thought so. I've got some packages I've downloaded more than once here. Right, so let's now fetch OpenCV. Uh, some additional modules there. Oh, no, I haven't installed LibWebP. I actually just looked at my... list here no so we need to do libwebp um, yeah there's dependencies so that's got to be rebuilt after libwebp as well Okay, I'll just get these modules. Right, 
unfortunately don't know how big these are. Hang on, didn't even say. So the main package was indeed 88 megabytes, but for some reason didn't say how big these are. Okay, so now let's extract open CV. So let's extract the modules and make a temporary build directory and copy this CMake command and check with Zinni on this instructs the make procedure to use Zinnilib. So I think we need to turn it off because I haven't installed that yet. So let's set that to off. Precompiled headers off is needed for GCC 6.1 and later. And open CV extra modules. So that's not there. We need to add that to use the additional modules. So let's put that there and start the compile. Or start the configuration rather. So it does say here that it downloads an initial file, IPPICV, which it's now doing. So I'll have to wait for that to finish. All right, it's done now. It looks like it's downloading some more files on top of that.
Okay, so that has built. I need to run this command here for the looks of it. And it says about if you have text life to rebuild or build the PDF and post strict documentation, Doxygen. So now we go to the installation. Okay, and yeah, this might look different because I did install it earlier on trying to do a bit of experimentation. So that's probably why it says re it's removed files and then reinstalled them. Um, so PDF and Postscript, Doxygen. So testing, it says you must have rsync installed and follow the instructions for the Automated testing, so we've got our sync. We have got our sync. So let's looks like we download the files with this. I think this takes a little while. Uh, let's come back out of this. So let's see how long the download takes. It does download a gigabyte, so it's quite a bit of data to download.
Okay, so that has been downloaded, looks like just under 1.2 gigabytes of data. Um, it does say to make a copy of this directory, which might be useful for future use. And you can synchronize it if you've got rsync installed, which I have done uh, with this command. Now, obviously, this should return nothing. You can see it's only sent 380 bytes and received 66k. Uh, because we've just downloaded it, it's obviously synced up uh, and it recommends to take a, an archive of that so I'm going to do that now um, and it's called the fate I'll call it ffmpeg um, dash 6.0 fate suite just so I know what version it applies to and Obviously, if the version of FFmpeg I use is different, then I'll know that I'll definitely need to use the rsync command. Um, so that's the file archive and the directory I want to back up or take an archive of is Fate Suite. So if I run that. That should have created that. That's my cell dash six. So there it is, same size, roughly the same size as what's downloaded. Now, most of these are, well, they appear to be videos and images, um, audio files. They're probably quite well compressed already, but uh, you might want to compress that. So I'm going to use XZ to compress this. Um, now, XZ can use some, uh, quite a lot of memory if you use it. Um, I normally use excessive uh, parameters on there to get the best sort of compression. Obviously, it takes a little bit longer. I use E for um, extra compression. Um, use the uh, 9 for the compression level, the highest compression level. And then T for the number of threads, and set it to 8. And then the file I want to compress is MPEG 6 Fate Suite. So start that, see how long this takes. Uh, sorry, that should be Z for you, not X. Let's see how long it estimates it's going to take. So it looks like it reckons it's going to take 45 seconds at the moment, but it's not going down. So it could be just a minute or two. Yeah, it's going starting to go down now. So maybe like a few minutes. So it's not too bad. It's already done 50 percent. And the compression rate is actually better than I thought it would be. It's um, currently compressed 750 down to 550 megabytes. So it's a lot more than I thought it would be. Generally, media doesn't compress well, but maybe, maybe there's some other stuff in there that's not compressed. Some uncompressed audio files or video files, maybe. Okay, yeah, so that wasn't too bad, a minute and a half, and it's managed to achieve about a 70% compression rate, so that's um, that's quite reasonable considering the content. So I'm going to now move that file into the parent BLFS directory, so it's there for posterity, and now I can run the tests. Um, I think this takes a little while. Well, it reckons three SPU with threads equals four, but um, these SPUs in here seem to be wildly out. 
Uh, I mean, in theory, on this machine, that would be equivalent to about a minute and a half. Uh, sorry, well, even a quarter of, of that. Um, if it was four threads, it would be a minute and a half, and then divide that by four, so that's about 20 seconds, but I can almost guarantee it won't be that quick. So um, we'll see um, how long it takes with a time. And run that. Do we have to change, yeah, threads to the number of cores 16 and we'll begin to run this now see how long it takes Okay, well that actually took about double the time of the estimate, so it wasn't too bad, but still um, way out. <clears throat> now let's check the output, 3880, a successful run should return error as a warning just to list a test and total amount at the end. Okay, so we need to look at the fate log. So escape colon dollar should take us to the end. Uh, no, it's not even put that out actually. No, it hasn't done that at all. Uh, just a list of tests. Oh, I see. And so because they've chained these two commands together. Right, okay. So we've got 3,880 tests. It says there should be more than 3,800. And there's no errors, so that's fine. Okay, so that's FFmpeg done. Close that down. We're back to Alsa plugins. We've got lib sample rate. Let's check that. I'm sure we've done that quite a long time ago. Yeah, well, not that long ago, but we have done it. Pulse audio we've got. And speaks we've got as well. I think, have we? Speaks. Let's search for that one. Yes. Okay. So, Alsa plugins. link and my simple configure make and install no tests it's done That's Alsa plugins. Uh, oh, sorry, we're doing all of Alsa. Alsa plugins. The next one we've got is Alsa libs. Uh, sorry, Alsa utils. Um, we've got Alsa lib. We've got doc utils. FFTW done. Sample rate XML TO. So we can install this fella. Delete. 
RC utils. So we need to put a fix in for glibc by the looks of it. And we've got configure here. Looks like we need to make some changes to it. Disable else of conf, which is incompatible with you, Dev. Okay. Disable XML TO so we can enable that and regenerate the man pages. Disable bat to make this switch if you have installed FFTW and wish to install the basic audio tester. Okay, we've got that and we can install that. And with n curse, uh, with curses equals, equals n curses w switch forces the use of y character and curses library. So we'll have that as well, as it is already in there. Okay, and make make check to run some tests. That's done. Uh, sorry, make install next. Now it's done. So next is Alsa Tools. And GTK2 is needed. I think we've got that one. Yep. That was quite a while ago. Uh, GTK3, we've got FLTK to build a couple more tools. So high color icon theme, have we got that? Yeah, we've done that. Libpeg JPEG Turbo, we've got PNG, we've got Lib, we've got desktop file utilities. Doesn't look like we've got that one. No, we haven't got that one. So we need to look at that. Emacs optional. Don't normally install that. Um, if, if it's obviously something you use, you want you'll want to install that. So desktop file utils. Uh, there's two downloads here. So it warns you about um, upgrading and something to do there. Uh, but other than that, we're just going to, um, you must remove the desktop file edit. Okay, we'll just remove something that doesn't exist, so not a problem. I'm not sure if that should be part of that warning box, really. Uh, so patch the project and we'll build without any optional Features available and install. So it talks about a cache file that can be rebuilt or updated with these commands. So I'm not sure if this will do much at the moment. No, it could not be. Uh, sorry, this will need to be done as a root. I'm not sure that we've got any applications to update at the moment, but there may be some tools we've installed, possibly. So there's no harm in running that. 
So that's desktop file utils. We go back to FLTK. And all we've got is a rebuild to utilize tax live. So let's put that in and rebuild after tax live. And let's now fetch it. So there's no extra documentation, uh, sorry, extra options to configure this. That's done. Not gonna create the API documentation. The test for package interactive to run the tests. Run test unit tests in addition there are 70 other executable test program and test directory that can be run individually so let's run that all right okay these got to be run on the GUI by the looks of it um so once again because i'm remote i can't show you the GUI, but i'll attempt to run them and um, when i rebuild text live then i'll be able to show the tests because i will definitely be in the uh, online uh, on the local terminal then so I'll just log in start the GUI change to sources BLFS FLTK and it's test forward slash unit tests oh yes okay so Windows appeared um, yeah, it's a window with some information. Um, oh yeah, there's various tests on, on the left-hand side. So I'm not gonna go into that at the moment. I'm not gonna test each one, but it explains each test to show that it's passed or failed. So yeah, I'll do that more thoroughly as I say when um, I rebuild the text live. Um, but the test program ran anyway, it looked okay, so that's that's good enough for now. Uh, let's now install. And as it says, there's some example games built as part of the tests and documentation. So I'm not sure if the documentation will install. Uh, minus e. But we can try it. Okay, so maybe it's pre built documentation. So that's FLTK. So now we should be okay to build ALSA tools. So let's fetch it. Uh, let's tidy this up first. Running multiple packages in the script it needs to be done. All oh, right, so this is the as root function again. So we'll kick that off. Start a subshell that will exit on an error. Remove a tool that needs Qt two or three and two unneeded files. Install the ALSA tools by running the following commands. So let's put that in. Looks like the 
obviously in subdirectories, I imagine, and they're building separately. Okay, now we can exit this subshell and that's the tools all built. So now we move on to Alsa firmware. So this contains firmware for certain sound cards, so it could be quite important for yours, possibly. And there's a simple installation. Make install, and that's done. Next, Alsa OSS, compatibility library for programs that need to use OSS. So all that needs is Alsa lib, which obviously we've got. <coughs> Again, straightforward compilation instructions. Install and it's done. And that looks like this the end of the ALSA library, uh, ALSA suite of programs because the next package is called Audio File. So I'll shut that down now and we can move on to iBus. And this has got a couple of dependencies. So deconf is the first one. This needs lib handy. So let's put that in now. All right, so let's fetch the file. Extract it. Just double check we've got the dependencies, so that's all right. Uh, CD lib handy. So let's build and oh, we could add in the build JTK, GTK doc to build the documentation. So let's create the temporary directory. Copy the Mies on command, go back and add in that. So that looks all good. Now we can run Ninja. Ninja install and that's done. So that's lib handy back to deconf. So we've got all these other options optional download, uh, optional dependencies. So we can now fetch. The, looks like there's two tools here. To fetch. So 
So we'll start with the first one, which is decomp 040. So we've got a set to put in first. Then we make a temporary build directory. We've got a meson setup. Let's look to see if there's anything else we can add in. Oh, that's API documentation. So we'll ignore that. We'll just put in this command and then run ninja. We can run ninja test. That looks good. So I'll run ninja install and that's good. <coughs> now we can optionally install the editor. So again, there's no other options apart from building API documentation. We'll just copy and paste that. That looks good. Doesn't look like there's any tests. So we'll just run the installation and that's done. The conf. So back here we've got ISO codes next. ISO codes, no dependencies for this. So we'll just put this in immediately. Again, there's no, oh, there's a note there about um, installing over a previous installation, so we don't need to worry about that. We'll just install it, run some tests, and then we can install the package itself. And that's complete. So we'll tidy that up. And we're back onto iBus. Gadget introspection. Let's check that one. Yeah, we need to rebuild that after a few dependencies by the looks of it. But apart from that, it is actually in at the moment. <clears throat> so GTK2 lib notify. So we've got these dependencies, runtime, a couple of dependencies here. Notification daemon or XFCE4. So let's do the notification daemon. Canberra, did we actually get to install that? We're still, we're still trying to build this. So we'll have to do this <coughs> um, after we've built Lib Canberra, which we're proceeding to get towards to build. So these are both runtime dependencies. So I'll make a note of these. Um, so lib notification needs to be done first. Uh, I'll put these in my blog of things that have been and need to be installed. So, uh, build after uh, 
Canberra. Required for my bus run time. Just put a note while I, while I need it there. And this one. Same thing. So I'll leave them up because Lib Canberra is something we're going to getting back to, well, hopefully soon. Um, so at the moment, uh, luckily there. Uh, oh no, Lib Notify is recommended actually. Oh, notification is runtime. Right, okay, so Lib Notify, I don't need to keep a note of because I can install that now. But the notification daemon is actually required by Lib Notify. Build after Lib Canberra required for Lib Notify runtime. Right, so this is the one I can build next, Lib Notify. So copy that, paste that in. Um, Shell and KDK will provide their own notification demons, so they won't use this. So there's no other options, we we'll just copy all this. Uh, right, let's do that again. There's no test suite. Um, don't want to build the API documentation, so we'll install it. And that's done. Back to iBus. Um, notify GTK3. We've got so GTK4 we need to install next. It looks like we've installed most of this most of the dependencies at least so that's a good thing so I'm going to look for all these just to make sure we have actually installed them if I can spell them right Right, there it is there, Forbiddy's in there. GDK, PixBuff is there. Graphene, we haven't done. ISO codes, I think we've just done. Yep. Lib Epoxy, I'm pretty sure we've done that. Yep. Lib XKB Common. Lib XKB. Yep. Pango, I'm sure we've done that. Yep, PY object. Yep, Wayland protocols. Yep, add waiter. Doesn't look like we've done that. Done that one. I thought we'd done that one. <clears throat> I've obviously looked at it and uh, not not built it at the time. So let's do that one next. So this needs Git. We've got GTK two three. We've got lib SRVG. We've got oh, and we're trying to build in Inkscape. So that's why the links change color. So. Optional, so it looks like I'm going to have to install it now and then install it again after Inkscape. 
So let's put this in and then <clears throat> rebuild after Inkscape. Let's copy the link. <clears throat> right, yeah, do I need to... So this is a simple package to install anyway by the looks of it. Okay, sudo, uh, let's recall that, sudo make install, and it's taking its time, that's done. Back to GTK4, we're checking these ones we think we've done. LibVPX, I'm sure we've just done that. LibVPX is there. High color theme again, I think we've just done that in the last hour or two. High color theme, yeah. LibRSVG, yeah, we're certain we've got that one. Yep. Object introspection we've got. I'll check it anyway. Yep. Color date. Right, I haven't done that, so that's probably one that we're due to install. Yep, there it is there. So let's get that up. Which one is it? It's after. Let's give a right object. So what's just before it? Oh, it's for QT. For the looks of it. Let's have a look at none desktop. So we need to find out where we get to the point where it's looking to. Oh, it looks like we're rebuilding GTK3, that's what it's all about. So I think. I think it will be safe to install this now. We've got all the recommended and required dependencies and I'll let that get rebuilt to cover GNOME Desktop and these other optional packages here. So we'll do this now. Theme. Oh, I've made a little mistake in. Oh, yes, that is to rebuild our print scale. I've got to. Mistake there, so let's just correct that. Right, so color D, rebuild after. Gnome desktop color D GTK and sane. I'm not sure if I'm going to install that or not because it's for scanners, but I might do. But let's do this now. So it should be a dedicated user for this. So we'll put these in as the root. Uh, 
fix a double free causing a build failure. I'm not sure what that is. Make a temporary build directory and copy this mise and set up. Let's see what other options we can tweak here. So that's the daemon user. We've got Valor installed. Don't have system D, lib color compact true. Okay. We haven't got that installed. Don't believe LFS uses bash completions. So we've got GTK doc available, so we can install that. And docbook utils as well. Docbook XL. XSL NS, but it doesn't mention, it doesn't look like there's something in Beyond Linux from scratch. Doc book XSL NS. No, it's not, so that's why it's mentioned but can't be. Built. So we'll have to set that back to false. Okay. So that looks good now. So let's run Ninja. And install the package. We can run Ninja test now this one will fail if the package is already installed uh, it's strange that they've put that then after the package has been installed um, so that's why we've got one failing but other than that it's what's expected um, so we can tidy up now. So that's color D. Back to GTK4. Cups, is that due to be installed? Yes, it is. Let's have a look at that. That recommends color D. We could probably do this now, actually. Um, oh, what should I do with the USB pad? Extension details. Optional and required post install. Um, and what needs a disk? QT, right, okay. I'm tempted to install this now. I'll, I'll keep Color D to be. Reinstalled, shall I? There's no need.
trying to work this out in my head, which is the best way to do this. So QT needs cu uh, cups, which is, I can't see it there now. There it is there. So that's the direct dependency for QT. Then cups needs color D. Color D needs known desktop, which needs GTK3, and we because of that we're starting to install GTK3. Yeah, we're going through the GTK3 dependencies. Um, I think I'd be tempted to install cups now because we've got Color D installed. As far as the required and recommended are concerned, it's just optional packages. So cups should be happy with that. I think Guten Print can take a while to build. Yeah, let's go for cups. So I'm going to shut that down. I have to remember the color D's a dependency because of cups uh, so let's go back here pull up cups here so we've done color the bus lib usb linux pam xdg utils let's do that one next so we've got all the dependencies for this so So let's paste that in. Copy the link address. Test the script must be made from next Windows based sessions. Okay, well, I'll run them and try and describe what's happening. Um, okay, that's it. That was quick. So, once again, I'll go to the terminal. Uh, log in again. StarTex and CD. Sources BLFS XDG utils and run make minus K test. Right, it's coming up with a load of um, categories, if you like, of tests, I imagine. And it's putting pass and untested, I've seen against each one. Currently, it's hanging on one called generic no arg dash one dash thirty seven. I'm not sure if there's anything I can show here at all, is there? Looks like it's got stuck on that one. Quick look at top. Oh, so it's running on one. No, it's not. There's, it's probably waiting for something to happen. So I'm not sure if that's stuck. Oh, there are several runtime requirements for test increasing a browser. And, all right, so we haven't got a browser, which is what we're trying to build. So it's probably not worth doing anything else then in that case. Um, yeah, I'll abandon it. Press Control-C, that's caused it to fail. So 
that will have to be rerun again with a browser. We've got um, MTA installed, so I'll add notes to my spreadsheet. Rebuild for tests after browser installed. So all I'll do now is uh, I'll have to go back when I to where I was and make install and that's done. Okay. So back to cups and we need lib paper next. paper this option is needed to run the tests okay so we'll just copy and paste otherwise run the checks that's all okay make install and that's finished Oh, there's some configuration to do here. So we can, all right, so this is for an individual's home directory to set it up. And for globally for all users, set it up there. So again, I'm gonna use A4, same as we did during Linux from scratch. Uh, where the default shown there is letter. In this case, the default shown is A4. You can just change A4 for letter if that's what you prefer. So as the root user. Okay, so that's done. Lib paper. Don't use libkerberos, and these two are required after we've installed uh, cups. So we can now build cups itself. Let's fetch the tarball and extract it. So if you've got a printer driver, you need to ensure the kernel set up for that. Or if you have a parallel port driver, a uh, person got neither use a networking, a network based printer. So I'm not going to even bother checking them, but um, I suppose we could view to see what it's currently defaulted to. So we look for US, well USB support is definitely set because we want the USB ports to work and actual printer support is not set by default so and I imagine the parallel port is not set either by default yes it isn't so you'd uh, have to go in and modify that if you needed either of these two connection options uh, so we need to become the route to add some users for printing and a group and you probably want to add your user to the LP admin. So I'm going to add my kernel text user to that group. Um, if you didn't install XDG utils, you need to do this said so that it gets a default browser. Looks like the default's to Firefox, which is not the browser we're gonna be installing 
initially so it's probably a good idea to install xdg utils um, i would just say replace firefox with a web browser of your choice so i imagine that would have to be the name of the binary so you'd have to double check like for falcon what the binary is which i believe is falcon with a k so that looks like we don't need to do anything there uh, we've got a configure command to start with let's see if there's any other options to tweak here Okay, so there's one they might want to use, and we've installed libpaper, so we might as well use it. Uh, so once that's configured, we're down here now. We'll build it. Right, it says that it needs, again, a graphical session with a bus address. So, um, again, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'll try it. So, lc underscore all equals c make minus k check. Right, it's running through. It's doing some jobs for the looks of it. Uh, let's see if there's anything I can trace here or tail. No, there doesn't seem to be any log there at all. But it's running some tests still. No, there's no logs, unfortunately. It's actually paused to wait for a job history to expire, so it's probably why there's nothing showing as currently active. Let's see how long it reckons this might take. 1.6 SPUs, okay. Okay, so starting the history test now with cups D. Let's wait for the job history to expire again. Okay, it's finished now. It says all tests were successful. So that's very good. So let's go back to this and we can install and some documentation as well by the looks of it. Remove a shipped boot script. Uh, don't know why this double ampersand is there because that indicates there should be some other commands after that that command. So I don't think I'm I'm feeling that was there last time I built it actually. There seemed to be a mistake like that, which seemed a bit strange. I mean if I put this in you can see it's waiting for another command, so that will never run. So I'll just do that by itself. Create a basic cups client for configuration by running this command. And this package installs icon files and user hierarchy. You can improve the performance of memory uses by updating that file to perform the update. You must have GTK2 or 3 installed initially. The following command as the root user, so we can do that. 
configuring cups we need to install this file for PAM and install the cups daemon uh, script sorry to start the daemon at boot time and we can attempt to start it now Okay, that seems to have started successfully. So that's cups finished. And it looks like conveniently we've got cups filters next, which needs to be installed. It's a requirement, as you can see, after cups. So I'm going to move straight onto that. In fact, let's go back. I'll open up in a new tab because the next thing I'm going to install is Guten Print. So cups filters needs ghost script. Now that's got quite a few dependencies itself. Oh, I think we've probably got nearly all of them actually. So that might not be a problem now. So we've got cups, we've got glib. Let's do ghost script next. Okay, libidn is probably the only one. Um, I think we've installed libidn2, but um, it's uh, obviously only needs the first version cups font config free title CMS. Yep, that's all okay. So we'll install libidn. Yeah, we've installed all of these. Emacs, not gonna bother with. Open JDK. Right, now that's a big build. And I think there's quite a few dependencies for that too. Uh, we might be all right actually. I think we can do that as well. So it's just graph is which needs to be installed. I wonder if it's time to do that now. Let's do um, CPIO next should be fairly straightforward, yeah. And we'll install this after text live. So let's fetch. Oh, we're still in uh, move CPIO. Tidy up cups. That's better. Now we can do CPIO. So we build with those options. Take them as they are. Not building the documentation because we haven't got text live yet. Although I think it might be very soon coming to the point where we can install this. So look at it now. So it needs ghost script. So I wonder if we should install it after ghost script. That might be a good point to install it. Okay, so that's CPIO built. Let's run some checks. That's all passed. Become the root and install. So that's done. Shut that 
down, back to open JDK. Let's take a look at graphes. So we've got Pango, Cairo, XOR font. PNG output required for building Gaggle. So let's have a look at that one. That needs Babel. So we have all of these. Yeah, we've got little CMS2. Let's just check that it's actually installed. Yep, it is. So let's do Babel next. Okay, um, I think we can just copy and paste this. Ninja test. That looks good. CD minus A, SU. Make install, that's done. And that's all built. Okay, that's Babel. Back to Gaggle. Jason Glib, I think we've done that. I need to be careful checking these now in case they're packages that are due to be installed or ones that I've looked at. I've pulled the page up. Jason GDB, yeah, we've done that. Or if I've um, uh, installed or gone to install them, for example, and not finished it, maybe. Uh, Done that one. So graph is, is what we're trying to build. Graph is needs gaggle optional for various. All right, so we need to skip gaggle at the moment and build it after graph is, I think. Yeah, so let's put that there. Um, we can do the remaining packages afterwards. Uh, so let's look at these GTK2 Turbo GD library. Optional to load graphic images that may be displayed inside the nodes of a graph. So this needs ghost script. If IDN. So I wonder if we should install ghost script now to satisfy graph is and then come back and install it again when we've got libidn installed. So let's do that. Uh, let's pull that up here. Go script. And rebuild after uh, libidn one right this is getting quite complicated now uh, getting so far down so many dependencies um, if you remember this is all to try and build falcon this is not what I intended. We're going to end up building most of Beyond the Linux from scratch, but uh, before getting the browser and getting onto the system, but uh, that's the way it is sometimes. So let's uh, fetch this 
package and some fonts and some more fonts. Okay, so let's extract ghost script uh, 10. So I removed some internal versions of these packages we've already built as dependencies. And we compile, looks like delete another one there. Configure with this option here, this configure command. We've installed libtiff, so we'll leave that. So we'll link to cups because we've got that. So we'll just accept that simple configure command. Okay, and build. It says that the shared library depends on GTK plus three. It's only used by external programs like these here. Okay. Oh, I see, because the shared library is a separate build. So I'm going to be installing Image Magic, and I think these two here as well. I think they're part of Text Live, as I remember. So we will build the shared library afterwards. Okay, so make SO. Right, so now we're ready to install and also install the shared library. And oops, documentation and the optional fonts are installed into the system. Now this command here puts a nice picture of a tiger up, but obviously it's not going to work because the X display is not available from what you're watching. So I'm going to try it on the prompt again on the actual terminal inside X windows. So gs minus q minus d batch full slash user share ghost script 10 examples tiger and indeed I've got a window come up and it's got a picture of the ghost script tiger so that's fine. So that works, that proves that Ghost Script is working fine. 
So I'll come out of this and tidy up. So that's going to be reinstalled after libidn. I'll shut that down, go back to Graphviz. So Graphviz has now got GhostScript, got Libara, SVG, Poplar, FreeGrout, Libglade, Qt. Oh, so we're going to have to build Graphviz after Qt, unfortunately. That's a shame. I was hoping to get it in and be done with it, but never mind. Experimental. GCC for the Go compiler. I think we did that, didn't we? Installed it with Go. Yes, we did. So we've got that. And Ghost Script's also needed for the documentation for Graphviz. So really, uh, it looks like we're okay to build Graphviz. We just need to rebuild it for QT to get this GV edit tool, which is quite a handy thing to have. So let's put Graphviz in now. Rebuild after QT. Fetch the package. Oh, yeah, I forgot that actually. The note there, it says that it's a good idea to build graph is because it's quite a uh, common dependency build it on its own without any of the dependencies, um, which is enough, and then rebuild it when you have enough packages to suit your needs. So I completely forgot about that. So let's extract it. So we could have actually built this sooner and then rebuilt it as and when we needed to after QT basically. So install graph is by running the following commands. Have we got libwebp to do we get to install that? Yes we did. So we can include that option. So let's Put these two commands in. Uh, Java include Java. I use Java there as well, so it's after Java as well. That's the trouble with clicking on links and just seeing the color and missing them. So it's rebuild after Qt and Java. So I'll have to skip that for now and we haven't got that. Uh, what did it say about that? Yeah, these two for building, so we haven't got those options. So that's the only extra option we put on at the moment. So it says to get a meaning meaningful date in the version string we need to run this. Um, we can check these here to see what's not going to be installed it looks like. Most of what we expect is going to be installed. There's Qt is not because QMake wasn't found. Uh, we've got Perl, PHP, Python, we haven't got R. Oh, so Ruby, I think Ruby is going to be reinstalled but there's no headers for it anyway. So there's Go as well, and Java, so, because we haven't installed it, so that's okay, looks good. 
let's build make. Okay, and we'll install it now. And that's complete. So back to Gaggle, which needed, was it Gaggle we were doing? I think it was. Oh, it was more for this, wasn't it? I think. What did Gaggle need again? Graph is. Rabble, we did. Graph is. Need a gaggle now, was it this? Let me look. Is it ghost script then? Right, I knew this would happen. I'm getting a bit lost as to what needs. What now? Um, Babel, so that we've got graph is now. We could probably finish this one off. And um, if I could find what this is fulfilling, house of superior cups and the witch exhausting. Double get get. So we could, we're ready for open JDK virtually. It's just these two. Which aren't a real problem, don't think. Change that needs open GDK. Is it go script? Cups. Go script is a reinstall. Oh, was it Croft is a needed gaggle? Is that what it was? Oh yes, PNG output is required for building gaggle. Right, so gaggle is the next one to install and then if this is, as I read this correctly, a dependency of graph is, then it will be resolved when we rebuild graph is after Qt and Java, right? So Gaggle is the next one we're going to do. So we've just got to fill in the holes. We've got these two. Um, ASCII doc, I think we've got. Yep. Cairo, we've got FFmpeg now, haven't we? I think. Up. GTK Pix buff. Yep. GTK dot. We've got Jasper. Let's have a look at that one. No, we haven't got Jasper. So that will be the next one to do. Oh, sorry, just missed this. Yeah, right. Okay. So I was doing the highlighted ones. Oh, 
Let's have a look at that. I'm sure we've got to rebuild this for some reason. Let's look that one up. Rebuild after graphics and rust and TK. Right, well, we've got graphics and rust in now. Let's have a look at TK. That just needs Xorg libraries. So have we built TK then? Yes, we have. Right, so we can rebuild Ruby. So let's put message there saying it's going to be rebuilt. And we'll rebuild Ruby now. So this is in Gaggle. There it is there. Yeah, that looks all good actually. Okay, so extract it. Configure it. Let's check. So without base Ruby, this switch prevents using the system Ruby if it's already installed. build system we use the newly built version instead so that might be the better option right probably don't need these two here um, and we haven't got doxygen anyway so let's add that one and that one for avoiding the API documents. Okay, so now let's build it. So that's done now. I assume this is going to fail this command. Um, yeah, it has. So that's because of the API. We've opted not to uh, build or install. So sudo minus e make install. That's done. So now we can run the tests. Now, since remember, we did have a few failures last time, so let's see how we get on this time. Okay, so it's finished. We have got some errors. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure where the 
25,000 tests come from. There's no status at the end here that indicates that, just 139 examples, zero failures. Um, a few tests may fail due to system configuration expectations, so I'm not really sure how to interrogate these failures or examine them. There's nothing like this is where it starts here, there's nothing immediately obvious. Fiber count 10,000 skipping, parcel 1789 tests. So, like I said, I'm not sure where the 25,000 comes from. This looks like this may be a, an error here. It says just to try again without the J option. Yeah, I guess I could try that. I'm not sure if it will slow it down somewhat, but let's have a go. <clears throat>
Right, so that's finished. Um, we've still got errors. I saw where the numbers have got from now. Uh, I didn't watch it closely last time, so I'll see where the 25,000's come from. Um, you can actually see the errors now as well, by the looks of it. Looks like it's just these three. Um, Still not much of an indication as to what did fail, but um, according to this, it's a hundred percent past the looks of it. Uh, so zero failures there as well, so it's a bit strange the output. I uh, obviously don't know too much about Ruby. Well, I don't know anything about Ruby to quite honest, let alone the testing. Um, but given it mentions 25,000 tests, and given that it appears to only be three failures, I'd say that's a good result. Um, yeah, so I can't see anything really wrong with that. So it's installed anyway now. Um, I'm happy that that's completed. So that's been rebuilt. So it'll tidy that up. Go back to Gaggle. So I think it's just these blue ones that need to finish off. Oh, V4 Utils. I think we installed those, didn't we? V4. Don't think I've got a very good font on this spreadsheet because I find hard hard to read things. Yep. Yes, we have built that. So that's okay. Yeah, I think it's just these stragglers to do now. GXIV requires XIV. In e H, I think we installed that. Check Brotley's in. In e H is in. Got Graphis and LibXSLT, so yes, we're ready for this one. So this is Exif 2. Okay, so temporary build directory, and then we've got a few options to look at with this CMake command. Oops, too hasty there. Right, so we've got enable video is set, web ready, yes, samples, no. If you build some programs, 34 additional programs are installed into user bins, so that might not be a good idea. Enable curl, we've got in H. Okay, we've got that, so we don't need to add that. And Brotley, we've got. So it's basically disabling those two switches, so we can accept that. CMake command, run the build. There's no test suite, so we'll just install this when it's finished. Let's 
So let's install that and that's done. So back to GXIF. So there's no optional settings here, so I'll just copy and paste. Run some tests. Okay, why well, didn't know like that? So the tests option is invalid so oops so let's have a look at the available options look for test so it looks like it's now called unit test. So this is what I found before. The BLFS is not as well curated as the main LFS book. It's, the LFS book is probably like gold standard, whereas the BLFS is a little bit behind. Um, there's, there's the odd mistake, bug, call it what you will. Things that have been, maybe it was okay once, and uh, now it's not quite so accurate. So this, I think, is probably a case in point. So it looks like... I forgot what it was now. Uh, so description is unit tests. Unit tests. So unit, I think it was a camel case. So let's try that now. All right, and it's got to be enabled. It looks like that's downloading stuff as well, so maybe that's something else that should be put into the documentation as well, in case that's an issue. So anyway, that has passed. It ran 33 tests, one unit test, and it was all okay, no failures. So we can run the install, and that's done. Oh, hang on a minute. I mean, oh dear, what have I done there? I've made a mistake. That's why it didn't work. Oh dear. Now, how serious is this going to be? I was in EXIF 2 still. Right, I'm going to have to reinstall EXIF 2 with the correct instructions. That's strange because it says it does not come with a test suite there, and it clearly did. Um, right, I'm not sure what I did there. So, exif. That explains why those instructions didn't work. Um, but what I've said does stand. Uh, there is occasionally the little um, error, but very minimal. So... That may have not been the case in that case. I'll apologise for that one. So, make the, and we took this as it was. <clears throat> Build that again. and install that. So that's Axiv again. So now let's do GXIV correctly.
So copy and paste. Now I'm on the right package. This command should work and it does. Okay, so now we can do ninja install and that's done. Now I've built the right package. So that's GX if two back to Geggle. Got Jasper next. I'm sure this is requirement by other packages. And we can rebuild this after text live as well for some documentation. So let's fetch this. We've got all the dependencies, that's fine. Um, enable doc is no because we haven't got text lives, so that's fine. And we'll just accept this as it is. Okay, make test. Okay, they've all passed. So we can now install the package and that's done. Get rid of that one and back to Giggle Lib Raw. So we've got all the dependencies for this now. So liberal enable JPEG Jasper LCMS. So yeah, we've got all of them. We'll configure this and build it as it's got in the book. And now that's built, we can install. So that's Libra done. Back to Gaggle, I think. Oh no, we've got one more there hiding away. Lib Spyro. So straightforward build. And run some tests, all passed. So we'll make, install, and that's finished. Uh, 
And finally, now we can install Gaggle. So if installing over a previous one, a module needs to be installed. So obviously this is not going to exist. No, it doesn't. So there's no point in doing that if it's the first time, but there's no harm in running it if you're unsure. Uh, docs equals true. Looks like we can install that. So let's create the build directory and the meson command and add this option in here and then run ninja let's have a quick nosy here open exr is that not in then it's some scratch then no it's not okay SDR1, that's interesting because unless it's been removed, I thought that was part of Beyond the Linux from Scratch. Oh, that's what the SDR1 to compat's about. That's probably what that is. Okay, so I think we can just go ahead and build this. So that looks like, I assume it's been done. It's been built. It's built the documentation at the end. So let's run the tests. So yeah, it does say in the notes that the FF load save and known to fail due to incompatibilities with FFmpeg 6. So those seven are expected failures. So now let's install and that's done. So now on to open JDK. Um, so an existing binary or an earlier ver built version of this package So there's no environment needs to be set up here with the looks of it. Okay, we do that afterwards. So it's normally we set up an environment like with uh, Xorg and with Qt and KD Frameworks, I think. And then you install the packages. This, this one, it's the other way around. So what I shall do is get the downloads running. Uh, I'll download both of these because I intend to keep this. In fact, what I'll do is I'll download the one I need. And when that's finished, I'll download the other one in the background to save a bit of time. So we've got Alsalib, we've got Cups, we've got Giflib, and we've got the XOR libraries. And this is quite a straightforward installation. Um, and also this uh, open JDK here, what, what we're doing basically, if you read the instructions, it tells you that we're downloading a binary here because you need the binary to bootstrap the building of the open JDK from source. 
So you, need, you basically need a Java to build Java. So that's what we're doing is building a pre-built version, probably one that the Beyond Linux from Scratch team have built themselves. Um, so that's why the download's so big at the moment. Um, in fact, I'm not sure. Yeah, this one's fairly big. It's not as big, but it's still reasonably big. So I might get that downloading first, actually, because this binary version is just a case of unzipping the file, extracting a file, um, and that's it. There's not really an installation, a source installation as such. So let me get a new tab up. Going to sources. BLFS and I'll download the source and the test for the source version and finally the 32 bit version just for my own use. So that, that last one is not absolutely necessary, only if you intend to build 32-bit versions. So I'll leave that downloading in the background. So now we've downloaded the binary version, we can install it. I'll do these one at a time. So that creates a directory. Let's become rude to do that. That creates a directory in the opt hierarchy. Um, I'd better extract that package we've just downloaded actually might help. Okay, so now I'm going to move all the files that are in this directory into that OpenJDK directory as the root. So that's done. And then change the ownership of that directory to root. And finally, create a symlink to a non-versioned version of that directory in opt. So you can see it's what we've done with Rust C. We've got a symlink without a version pointing at the version directory. So now we should go to the continuing the Java, uh, configuring the Java environment. So I'll become root and copy all of this in. And if sudo is installed, then these variables that are in that config command should be made available. To use mandb to include open JDK man, JDK man pages in its database, database issue as the root user. Setting up certificate authority certificates for Java. So assuming you've installed make CA, which I hope you have done. Uh, we run that command and then we can check that they've been installed correctly with that command. So at the prompt, enter key store password, enter change it, and or just press the enter key. If the CA certs files is installed correctly, you'll see a list of certificates with related information for each one. So if you later install a new JVM, you just have to create the symlink and default location to use the CA certs. So that's um, all these certificates. So that proves that it's working fine. And if I'm correct, yeah, that should be an empty directory. So 
So that's the environment done, the binary version of OpenJDK done. In fact, I should add notes to that effect in my notes. So Java and the Java environment. Uh, I suppose that's taken as a given, actually. Right, how's this doing? Right, looks like that's all done, so that's good. So let's have a look at this. Um, actually, might need to source. Yep. That always removes the prompts. I'll log back in again, I think. Yeah. yeah, that's better. So if I do echo dollar Java home, you can see that points at that uh, sim link that points at the versioned binary that we just installed. Um, the open JDK source includes a very thorough open source test suite using JT reg test harness. Instructions below allow testing the just built JDK for reasonable compatibility with a proprietary Oracle JDK. However, in order for an independent implementation to claim compatibility, it must pass a proprietary JTK TCK test suite. No claims of compatibility or even partial compatibility may be made without passing the approved test suite. Oracle does provide free community access on a case by case basis to a closed toolkit to ensure 100% compatibility with its proprietary JDK. Neither the binary version provided on the Java page nor the JVM built with the instructions below have been tested against the TCK. Any version that is built using the instructions given cannot claim to be compatible with a proprietary JDK without the user prime form completing the capacity tests themselves. With that in mind, the binaries produced using this build method are regularly tested against the TCK by the members listed on the site above, in addition to the community license above and an educational non commercial license for TCK can be obtained here. Okay, so basically you can't go around saying that it's compatible without passing the appropriate tests, but it should be. I think that's basically what it's saying. So let's go into sources, um, BLFS, and we want to extract open uh, what's it called? I'll oh, just JDK. JDK. CD into JDK 20. General availability. So we're happy we've got all the options. Let's just put in the building open JDK from source. Extract the test harness, um, unset Java home, bash configure. I wouldn't have thought there's much to change here without affecting the build, but let's have a look. With jobs we can add in. So I'll put 16 there. JT reg with GIF lib, half bars, LCMS, lib JPEG, lib PNG, Z lib. Version build is nine. New version pre. So you can prefix the version string. So I don't know what it, how it's going to come out, but you can put something like my prefix maybe, and then you'll know what it actually comes up with an option for the version I'll put kernel text in for example um, the CS certs with boot JDK the switch provides location of temporary JDK is normally not needed if Java is found in the path okay so let's run that
just examine what's been there. All right, yeah, so you can see where my prefix has appeared and where kernel text has appeared. So it's like a um, infix and a suffix almost. If you want to use that. So I will think I'll remove them. Rerun the config just so there's no problems that may arise by using that. Uh, no, I might actually leave it. Uh, if I do find there's a problem with it, I can rebuild this. I don't think it takes too long. So let's build it now. Make minus J N is not supported. Use make jobs equals N. Okay, that's interesting. It doesn't actually say that here. So make jobs equals 16 images. So have I got to override that with J1? Yes. So that is compiling on all cores at the moment. So that's obviously working okay. Let's see how long this is expected to take. Four SPU and 36 for the tests, okay.
Okay, so that's built successfully. So let's run the tests and copy all of this. And I'm going to time this. and run it concurrently by adding the conk command to this command here so minus c o n c colon 16 and we'll wait for that to okay group spec does not specify valid test suite Okay, so if I put that in the wrong place, then is that what it doesn't like? By adding in the below command, well, the English grammar is quite bad, so it's hard to follow. If anything, this should say value in the command below. Um, you can set the number of concurrent tests by adding the conk value in the command below. Right, so I did add it to the end of the command, um, which didn't work. So I'm going to add it to the beginning, just after the jtreg command. So conk colon 16, see if that, yep, that's where it should go then. So just wait for that to finish executing now.
Okay, so that's finished. It took about an hour. And it looks like there was 16 errors. Um, oh no, sorry, 62 errors and 60, 62 failed and 16 errors. Um, we've got 60 failures, which is slightly less, but 16 errors, which is slightly more. So um, it's around about the right area. There's nothing specific as to what has passed or failed. So it's, I think, good enough to be getting on with. So let's install the package now. So now two open SDKs, open JDK SDKs is installed in opt. You should decide on which one you'd like to use as default. Normally you'd just opt for the just installed JDK. If so, following do the following as a root user. So what we're doing now is going to switch the symlink here from the binary version to the version that we just installed. So you can see now it's pointing at version 20.02. Um, there's probably like a minor bug fix 9 on the end there. So that's the binary version that was initially just copied basically from the tarball and this is the one we just built. If decided you can create desktop files to add entries in the menu for Java on JConsole. The required icons have also already been installed so just copy that. And some configuration. Um, so all we need to do is just adjust this here. And I think this is the same as before actually. Type in the password, change it, and there's certificate so it shows that they're all working. Um, so configuring, this should all be set up anyway, there's nothing to do here at all. Um, what I'm going to do next, now I've installed OpenJDK, is I'm going to go straight to Apache Ant because that is a um, dependency for some packages. Um, just go and have a look at it quickly actually. Yeah, there's no fantastic dependencies so I'm going to go straight to Apache Ant install that now while we're here it's directly related to Java uh, it's basically a Java build tool so um, it seems the right thing to do so tidy this up Okay, and I'm going to copy the link address to download the package. So we've actually, I don't know why that's come up in a different colour because we have installed the binary even though we're not now using it. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure where that is. Let's click it like that and it should change colour then. That's better. So build a limited bootstrap of Apache Ant using this bootstrap shell script. Right, now that's because we unset Java Home previously. So what I'm going to do is log out, log back in again so that all the environment variables are set up correctly. Change back into the ant directory and rerun that bootstrap command and as you can see now it's working. And it says build successful so we know that that script's worked. Now download runtime dependencies
Okay, so those dependencies have been downloaded. We can build it with this command here. So that's built. So now we'll install it. And paste that in. So I've got to add this config file in so that ant home is in the path. And that's Apache ant. Okay, so that's Apache ant. Back to lib IDN, which needs OpenJDK. And we can now install that. Uh, PTH, just check that one, just to be sure. I'm pretty sure we've done that one, but yep, it is there. Copy link address. Uh, actually, what I should do next is just come out of here, log back in just to ensure that that path is set up correctly. So echo dollar and home, and there it is in the ops subdirectory. So now I'm going to fetch the tarball for libidn. Extract it, so it's version one we're doing. And we've got any configuration. We don't want to build the API documentation, but we will enable Java. So we've got documentation, yes. So I presume that's not the API documentation. Valgrid no, build C hash support. Although C sharp, sorry, that isn't it. Uh, address sanitizer, UB sanitizer, okay, I'm not sure what they are. So let's um, build a package. That's all worked, run some tests. And that's all passed. So now we can become the root and install. And that's done, I think. Yep. Right, didn't come out of that. Okay, so yeah, that's all gone. Nothing else lying around, is there? No. Okay. So that's lib IDN. Back to Ghost Script and we're reinstalling this I think because of why is it? All oh, right, it's because of libidm, because of Java. That's right. So, uh, go script. Yeah, rebuild after libidn one. So, let's copy that. Paste that in, and I mark it that it's going to be rebuilt. And we 
we don't need to download anything. So tar extract ghost grip. So remove these, remove Zlib the looks of it on the configure script, check for any other configure options. Uh, we've got cups installed now, so we don't need to do that. And it looks like we can accept the defaults. Build it. Okay, that's done. Let's build a shared object. That's done. Now we can become root to do the installation like so. Make install. And once again, install the shared object. And move the documentation around a bit. Uh, we don't really need to install the fonts again, but may as well do this. So that's okay. And then lastly, I need to rerun the file that demonstrates the tiger image, which of course you can't see. I've just run it again and it's come up fine again. So it's just a quick test to prove that Ghost Script is in fact running okay. So that is all good. So uh, I think that's the end of Ghost Script. Yep. So I'll tidy that up. And that's complete. Uh, all right, so shut that down. And what was this waiting for? Lib Canberra, right. So back to Cups Filter. So we've now got Ghost Script installed. Need to install QPDF. We've got that, we've got that, 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 that. Text live, so QPDF can be installed again after text live. I'm wondering if very soon I'm going to have to take a look at text live and start installing it. 
Yes, it looks like we've got nearly all of these dependencies here. There's fewer than I thought there was, actually. Maybe the thing that always puts me off, I think, text live is it delves down quite deep into dependencies, but to be quite honest, we've done so many dependencies already, it's probably not as bad as some of the other packages now. Um, let's have a look at these other packages that form part of the type setting. There's a few extra ones here. Yeah, that's waiting for QT. So maybe after QT has been installed. But yeah, certainly getting close to getting ready to install that. So let's now download the tarball for QPDF. Okay, there's nothing optional to change here that's mentioned in the book, so we'll just copy and paste. That's built, let's run the tests. Right, so that's tested all okay. So we'll now install, and that's QBDF done. Back to cups filters. So deja vu fonts we've got, we've got libexiv, all these, mu PDF, or mu PDF maybe. Um, I think we've got all of these, so let's do that now. So that's downloaded, extract new PDF. We've got a set command to fix and make file. Got a here to doc we create for configuration by the looks of it. That's waiting for the rest of these here. So we'll just put them in to get it to build. That's done. So we'll become the root user. And install it. So that's done. Back 
to cups filters and that looks like we're done except for Gutten print which is a runtime dependency um, which is also incidentally a runtime dependency for um, cups itself so it might be an idea to install that now and then it's fixed for um, oh, let's have a look at it actually see what it requires cups and gimp, well, GIMP the cups is installed gimp isn't let's have a look at that right, that's got a lot to do and it's an application so I'm going to avoid building that at the moment I'll make a note of good and print will need to be installed at some point. Um, Oh, I've got a notice saying WebP PixBuff loader needs to be installed after LibWebP. So I'll just have a quick look at that. Uh, let's open this in a private window. WebP PixBuff. WebP PixBuff loader. So I wonder if this was, oh, it's, it has dependencies. So this was obviously for something. I wonder if it's a runtime dependency. Uh, oops. LibWebP, that's the one I wanted to look at. Yeah, I wonder if it's a dependency for something. I can't remember what now. Uh, let's have a look at my spreadsheet. WebP dash pix. Yeah, it's not in there, so I'll have to install that. Um, at a convenient moment. Should I do it now? Uh, let's see where it should have been installed. So what was it? Lib. Sorry, web p underscore P underscore hyphen pix buff loader, that's it. So after GDK pix buff and live web, live web P. GDK pix. So it's 220 and live web P. Right, yes, it should have been installed after LibWebP, but just before uh, V4L util. So what I'm going to do is I'll insert this package and install it now. Um, so... This is WebP PixBuff loader. I was just about 20 odd packages back. So just make a note that it could have been built earlier. Uh, lib web p I 
but I'll install it now. So, yeah, let's do that now. So, get that in a new tab, search for it again, WebP, PixBuff Loader. Okay. Get rid of that. Copy the link address. Let's see if we've got it already. No. Paste. Have I got it in my drop down list? No, only the one I've got now. So let's install this. Okay. So we just copy and paste the commands and test and install it. And finally, it needs to be added to the loader's cache. That's done. So that's quickie. So now we do cups, filters. So let's get the tarballs. There's two. Oh, it's one tarball and a patch. Oops. So extract cups, filters. And we'll put the patch in first. And then we've got this configure command. Let's see if there's anything to modify. Stable Vahi. We've got a Vahi so we can remove that line. That's not compatible with BLFS. Don't want static versions and with test font path. If you wish to run a test, but you've not, but you do not have the default Deja Vu Sons. Right, okay, so we have got that installed, so we shouldn't need that. So we'll compile with those options. Okay, let's have a quick look at the summary. Interesting, hasn't found PHP. Whether that's a good thing or not, I don't know. Uh, if I was interested in developing PHP, I might take more notice of that, but it's no mention of it in the book, so just go with what the book's got. So that's built. Let's run make check. That's all six passes there, so that's good. And we can now make install. That's complete. Back to cups. So let's wait for good and print. Um, we did install this, didn't we? Yep. So that's something that I'll do. Uh, what was that needing? Cup, oh, GIMP, that's right. So good and print after GIMP. Okay, so that I'll, I'm hoping we'll get to the, uh, eventually we'll get to the, um, 
gooey on, on the actual machine. I didn't realise it would be this long installing so many dependencies uh, at this point doing it remotely. So that's colour D we've installed here. We've installed cups which was a requirement. Um, so I think we've just got to go through these packages that aren't highlighted here. I think all the other ones that have been visited have been installed and just start finishing these off so we can install GTK4. So graphene, we've got the dependencies for this one. So there's one for an option for the API documentation, so I won't bother with that, just copy and paste. Ninja test, and that's all done. So we are in the position to install. And that's done. Next up, we've got GST plugins bad. This need, oh dear, this has got a load of dependencies, croaky. Uh, right, we'll have to tread carefully here because there may be some of these that may not have been installed. So let's start with base, we've got libdvd read. So there's no dependencies on this one. Copy link. So there's no special options here again. No test suite. So we'll just install it. So that's that one. LibDVD nav. So that requires LibDVD. So again, just copy and paste the installation. There's no testing to be done, so I'll just install it. And sound touch, no dependencies. Just sound touch the name of the directory. The bootstrap command below fails if the AC local environment variable is set as specified in Xorg, Xorg 7. So let's have a look at AC local. It's not set. So we can enable this. Enable open MP. This switch adds support for running algorithms in parallel across several processor cores using OpenMP implementation provided by GCC. Um, so I presume that means it's not a separate bit of software. So let's try that out. OpenMP optimization is enabled. Okay, so that's good. So let's build 
and install. Oops. I don't know why that came up with the minus K, but anyway, it shouldn't have made any difference. Oh, it's probably the space on the end, that's why I copied a space that was there. It's not normally there. Okay, so that's sound touch complete. So let's tidy up. Back to GST plugins. Got blues, curls of FAAC or FAC. Let's copy that bit first. So bootstrap and configure, there's no other options. So we'll paste that in and build it. And that's built. The package has not got a test suite. However, basic functionality can be tested by encoding a sample WAV file. The sample file is installed by the ALSA utils package so let's run that that seems to have worked then decode the result using the FAAD program so we need to install that next it hasn't got dependency so let's pause that for a moment install FAAD Uh, there's a sample file here we can download. I'll move that to the parent directory. Uh, and we'll build this. Uh, it just says basic functionality can be tested by decoding the sample, which, as you can see, has come up with the exact same information. We can also use a play to play the sample. I'll get close to the speaker on the PC to see if you can pick this up at all. Okay, that's failed. Okay, it looks like my sound cards need to be configured to work properly. I think what I might do is um, try and configure the sound card to get that to work. So I'd have to bear in mind that we haven't installed FAAD and we're in the middle of testing FAAC. Uh, when we reboot after the kernel configuration. So let's become the root, change into sources Linux, and if you remember the error it said for FAAD is that it couldn't find a PCM device. So what we need to do is go into device drivers sound card support into the ALSA part. Um, now the sound devices on modern machines are normally PCIe HD audio so um, to get the HD audio memory menu up you must have so I can't access that HD audio you must have the PCI menu set 
um, but as long as you haven't got anything selected in here that's okay then you can go into the HD menu and as I said uh, I think before that normally with the Intel chipsets although it does depend on what hardware you've got generally the real tech should work so we'll try that one um don't think there should be any other options that need to be set so now let's build rebuild the kernel Okay, let's build. So I'll run my install script to mount the boot partition and copy the new files there. Come out of root there. I'll close this down as well so the connection's gone. Come out of this. I'll reconnect as root and then do a reboot and log out and wait for that to come up so there's the grub menu we're booting again and I did see some messages coming up about the sound there, so I presume that's gone to the kernel log. So I'll reconnect here. Let's do a D message. Yeah, there it is there. So it looks like it should be okay. Let's go into sources BLFS FAD and try and rerun this here. No, it's still not working, so there's something else I need to configure. Can't find card zero. So what I can do here is um Alsa mixer no, so there's something I've still got something in the kernel to set up the looks of it um, I'll have to have a look at that offline because I don't know what work needs to be done okay it was a bit of a schoolboy error actually um, it was nothing serious it wasn't that setting that I set in the kernel in fact I've disabled that option that I set previously in the kernel reinstalled or rebooted with that option not enabled disabled just to prove that it wasn't needed um, all it was was the kernel text needed to be added to the audio group which I've now done and while I did that I also added kernel text to the video group as well in case that causes any problems with video playback in the GUI uh, but basically, if I get close to the PC again and recall this command for FAAD, a play sample to test. I don't know if you can hear that. Very faintly, some piano type music. So that proves that the sound subsystem is actually working once it's in the right group. It proves that FAAD is working correctly as well. So. All I need to do now is to install FAAD. That's done. T 
tidy FAAD up. Now go back to FAAC and carry on with this testing. So FAAD front left, let's try that. Okay, oh, it's come back with some information which looks good, and then a play front left dot wav should play some sounds. Yeah, I don't know if you could hear that, it's very quiet. It said front left as you'd expect. So, whether you can hear that or not, take it from me, it did come out with something, uh, so it does work. So, it proves that FAAC and again that FAAD are both working. So now all I need to do is to run make install on FAAC and there's some more codecs to download there if you so wish that are not mentioned in the BLFS book or not uh, got any instructions on how to install them in the BLFS book. So that's FAAC and FAAD installed. Now we're going to do GST plugins good just for one test the looks of it. And this needs, I thought we'd done libsoup. Oh right, it's a different version. So we've done libsoup2. Let's verify that. Yep, libsoup2 was the one we'd installed previously. So we need to install the newer version. Let's check these other ones. So we've got plugins oh base yeah base we've got installed caro flack fix by flame of soup vpx no so q2 will need to be installed afterwards or reinstalled after this um Oh, sorry, this package will need to be reinstalled after QT. Let's get that right way around. So it looks like, yeah, we just need to carry on with the highlighted packages. So let's start with LibSoup version 3. Sysprof, I don't think that's, I think that's still waiting to be reinstalled. Yes, it is. Let's take a look to see if that can possibly be installed now. Let's look at the uh, ATS tool. I think we've done that one. GTK4 is what we're waiting for. So no, it can't at the moment because we're actually heading towards building GTK4. So that again, still pending. So we can build libsoup3, but it needs sysprof to be rebuilt for the optional dependency. But looking at everything else, that all looks in place. So let's put this in libsoup rebuild after sysprof so let's fetch it so libsoup version 3 we're building So we've got a said, oh, this is just for the API documentation. Um, that needs the last character. So that's, I'm going to put it in anyway, even though I'm not going to install the, or knowingly install the API documentation. So let's copy the meson setup command and modify it as we need to. API disabled. If GI doc gen is, in a, is installed, the API documentation will be built and installed no matter if this option is used or not. 
This cause causes the Maze on command to fail if GI Doctrine is not installed. It's kind of confusing. So if GI Doctrine is installed, which we have, the API documentation will be built and installed no matter if this option is used or not. Oh, I see. So if it's not used or specified, then the API documentation will be built and installed regardless. Uh, so basically it's saying enabled as default if GI Doctrine is, is installed. This option causes the Meson command to fail if GI doc gen is not installed so it's kind of making almost stating the obvious really in both cases um, if GI doc gen is installed then it doesn't matter what this option is enabled or if it's not there and if you haven't got GI doc gen installed if you tell it it's enabled it will fail so it's kind of like I say obvious I don't want the API documentation so I'm actually going to add this option but set it to disabled it's kind of almost a pointless description for that command. Um, if you've got this far and not understood how these switches work, then uh, to be quite honest, it's uh, that would be a bit wor wor worrying. So docs disable to disable the API documentation because I've got GI doc gen installed. GSSI disable because we haven't got that support. And sysprof disable because we haven't got sysprof installed at the moment. So let's build that. So documentation won't be installed, so that's good. And hopefully it won't collapse in a heap because I've misunderstood that uh, explanation for the docs. So ninja test. Okay, and now we can install the package. That's done. Is there anything else to do? No. So we'll tidy up. Libsuit version 3. Clear that down. So next in lib is AA, next in list is AA lib. So this needs slang or slang. We've got the dependencies for this, so we can build this straight away. Copy the link, paste, and extract it. Does not support a parallel build. There's no extra options that we want to set or remove, so we'll just copy and paste. Okay, that's built. Let's do some tests. Okay, that's all done. So let's become the root and inst 
do all this system and it suggests that we may need to run ld config so we'll do that without the full stop and that's slang installed so now we can do aalib Seems the mirrors I get connected to on this DAC dash FRA are quite slow whenever I notice whenever I connect to that server are quite slow for some reason. So let's extract AA lib. We've got to a minor problem with an M4 file um, if I change into AA lib. Okay, so why didn't that change? Okay, I see the directory we've extracted is different to the file that we downloaded. So that's not mentioned in the book like it usually is. So configure and make, because there's no other options that are mentioned. And finally, make install. And that's AOLib done. Right, and it was actually dot zero, yep. So that's AOLib. Next we've got libdv, which is a codec. We've got SDL compact installed, I think, haven't we? We're just re gonna rebuild it later. So let's have a look. Uh, oh no, perhaps we haven't. Oh, we have, yeah, it's just the rebuild it needs later on. So we can use this, so libdv. Copy link address. Okay, uh, so we just disable XV. This parameter is required if an X window system is not installed. It also prevents configure for testing for libxv, which is only used for an obsolete pr program. Play DV will not be built with the current Linux headers and would also need other obsolete dependencies. Okay, so we'll leave it in then basically. So that's built, no test suite. Uh, we shall now install it. And that's done. Okay, libdv done, back again. Next we've got taglib. And this looks like it's probably the last dependency apart from QT which we'll have to rebuild the package for so this needs just CMake so tag lib copy link address So what have we got? So there's test suite requires CPP units, not BLFS package. So we'll just copy and paste to configure and build. And when that's done, we'll install it. Uh, 
Okay, so it looks like we're in a position now to build GST plugins good. Put that in the list and a note to rebuild after QT. Oops, what have I done there? After QT. So let's copy the link and fetch the tarball. As it says, so if you need a plugin for a given dependency, that dependency needs, dependency needs to be installed before this package. So, which is why I've gone to install all of them. So, plugin's good. no optional um, switches to add there. Run some tests. Got one failure there for some reason. Elements RTP payloading. So whether that's to do with one of the optional dependencies, I don't know. Um, but as I don't recognize it, uh, and given it's just one out of 108, I think that's suitable to uh, go ahead and, and install that package. So that's GST plugins good. So now we're back to GST plugins bad. So we've just done GST plugins good. JSON GLib we've got that one. We've got AOM as exif soup two lib sound file lib sound file. Did we do that one? Yes, and we need to rebuild it as well, right? Okay. LibSSH2, we've got USB, LibVA, LibWP, Neons next then. And we've got the dependencies here that we want to install, so let's put this one in. So we can change OpenSSL for GNU TLS if you so wish, apart from that. If you don't want to do that, just copy and paste the configure and build instructions. And run some checks. Can we regenerate the documentation, can we? Yes, we've got that capability with XMLTO. Just wait for these tests to finish. Okay, looks like it's okay. There's a few skipped for whatever reason. Looks like some libraries are missing. And now we can install. That's complete. So 
So that was neon. Next we've got nettle. We've done literally crypt. If both are not installed, open SSL will be used instead. I think we've got that. Let's have a look. Yes, we have. Oh, that's very early on we did that. That's okay. Open CV we've done with that additional modules. Was that a separate download on that, was it? Oh, yes, so it was. Open JBEG, open Opus, QR and code. So we're okay to install this. Uh, yes, SDL2 we've installed. Copy link address. So it allows you to build test programs, it requires STL2. So we'll add that in as we've got STL2 installed. Without tools, this option prevents building the QR code executable, removing the need for libpng. So we've got libpng, we won't add that in. Just run that as it is. And run make. We have got Doxygen, so we'll go for the installation. No additional documentation. Um, if you to test results, you've passed the with tests option to configure issue make check. And that's a pass, so that's all finished. So it's QR encode SBC we've got, I think. SBC, yep, that's installed a while back. STL1 to compact, we've got Wayland WPE backend. Needs WPE, so we're okay to install this. All right, so there's no optional information there, so we'll just copy and paste and install it, it's done. So now WP backend FDO. So again, no, nothing exceptional about this. So I'll just copy and paste and install it. So GST plugins, that looks like the whole lot that we've got, all the dependencies for the bad plugins. And again, as it says, if you need a plugin, you need that dependency installed. So we're covering that by installing everything. Let's put the name into the spreadsheet. Copy the link and download the package. So this is bad. Uh, G 
GPL without this switch plugins and dependencies on a GPL license libraries are not built okay so we'll just copy and paste this as it is Right, so that's finished building. I um, can run Ninja test here. It does say that several tests need a terminal emulator. So what I'll do is I'll run this here so you can watch it. And then, depending on what happens, I'm going to run it in, in the current. Well, we've got two skipped. It only took a few seconds to run. So I'll log on to the terminal again on the machine and run them there to see if those two skipped tests do actually run. So CD sources, BLFS, GST plugins bad into the build directory. And then I need to run Ninja test. No, those seem to have skipped, so I'm not sure what that's about. 79 OK, two have skipped. It's exactly the same. So no, I can't explain that. Um, right, we didn't get any failures, so that's OK. So all we need to do is to install the package and that's done so that was GST plugins bad we've done good now because of bad libvpx high color theme lib rsvg object introspection colored cups docs ffmpeg so highlights runtime only used by gtk4 demo for tin syntax highlighting with demo code so I may as well do that being as it's in the book needs to be rebuilt after qt so let's put this in highlight and rebuild after qt Fetch the tarball. For consistency, do not compress the man pages. Build it. So we can't build the Qt front end because we haven't got Qt yet. So let's install it. And that's it. Next, we've got lib cloud providers. So, copy that. Build. We don't want the API documentation, so we don't need to include any other switches. And 
we can install that and it's done. Next we've got SASSC. That hasn't got any dependencies, so let's put that into the list. Fetch that one and that one. So it's SASSC. There's no option, so we just build the library first of all. then install and build the command line wrapper and then install that as well and that's done So lastly on here we've got Tracker, this has got a few dependencies, we'll check these on the spreadsheet to ensure they are actually JSON Julia, I think I've checked this one a few times, yep, libsec comp, yep that's there, Valor's install, object introspection, Super 3 pick up object SQLite SQL.graph is libsoup. Okay, yeah, I'm happy with that lot. So I think I'm just going to install the track of miners, even though it's a dependency. Well, I'll get it up anyway. It probably depends on tracker. Yes, it does. So I've got that ready to install after this. So let's put tracker in. Copy the link address. Fix location to install the documentation into. So we'll do that. And we've got some options. So let's create the temporary build directory first. Then the meson setup command. And see if there's anything we want to change here. Man equals false. I mean, to switch if you have ASCII doc installed in which to generate the man pages. So instead of omitting it, I'll be quicker to change it to true. System to use services false, and that's it really. Okay, man page is set to true, so that's good. All this looks okay. So it's found both libsuit versions we've got. So yeah, it does look good. So Ninja to build. And finally Ninja install. To test results, run this command. So it's a bit strange again, the fact that we've installed it before we're um, testing it, it seems to be a bit of a cockeyed way of doing things, but it may be the only way. It may be that you can only test on something that's installed.
Right, some failures there. One test tracker FTS FTS is known to fail. Um, we've got these Spark UL that are failing. That is that FTS FTS bus query cancellation. So I'm not sure. Is that Gobtrick introspection? I'm not sure. Um, could run that again. Uh, just run Ninja test. See if it fails in the same way. Oh, oh, there we are. I didn't read it properly. The test suite should be run from graphical session. Okay, so I'll set that up while that's going to finish test and fail again. So I need to change into tracker build and run ninja test. Right, yes, it's it's run a lot quicker and there's only one that's failed. Test 18 of 38, tracker FTS, FTS, killed by signal 5, SIG trap. So I've got OK, 37 passed and that one failure. So that's why we got that problem. So I'll tidy that up now. And I can close that down, go to the tracker miners, see what this needs here, Exempi. So we can install this immediately. And there's nothing here to modify. So we'll just copy and paste the commands to build this particular package. So that's done, let's run some tests. Okay, they've all passed, so now let's install the package and that's done. Go back to the tracker miners, see what else we've got. Done that one. GST lib AV is a runtime requirement. We've got all the, op uh, the dependencies required. Let's put that in and install GST lib AV. So again, no information about any other options. Run the tests. 
all good six passes no fails is the important thing ninja installed and that's done back to tracker minor libgrss is next so again we've got the dependencies so you can see how over time we're getting these dependencies that we've previously built so it shows that they're being shared by different programs and it's not futile just installing them just for one package they have actually or well generally there's probably the odd one that's built maybe for some package one single package but generally um, it's worth installing them uh, let's fetch this one uh, libgrss oh there's a patch here didn't see that so let's fetch that so mv libgrss move that back to the blfs sources directory and then we should be able to run these in as they are because we're not doing API documentation and run make check which is all good and finally make install Okay, back again, libgxps. So GTK, little XMS lib archive. Yeah, that all looks good. So we can build that one. Copy link address. libgxps. Yep, same again, just copy and paste this and install it. So GXP set comp popular ASCII dog C make dconf fmpeg lib gsf. Okay, um, again, we'll just copy and paste this. Run some tests. So it says that a couple are known to fail. It looks like they haven't failed for us if they indeed exist. I can't see them mentioned. Oh, that one there. So that's actually passed in T1004. So they actually passed for us. So that's good. Make install and it's finished. Uh, back to tracker miners, network manager is next. So we've got a few dependencies here. Let's check Jensen. Yes, we've installed that. libndp. So there's no dependencies for this. So 
configure and make there's no options no tests so just install it and it's done right I'm not going to install DHCP CD because I don't use that obviously if you wanted to install that then uh, it looks like NTP is a requirement which is probably something I'm going to install anyway uh, just to get make sure the PC's got the right time so that won't be too onerous to build um, IP tables next IP cap so we've got that IP tables copy link address So some settings we need to check in the kernel. So let's do that now. Uh, Okay, so networking support, networking options, advanced net filter, configuration. Right, have I just whizzed past it? Let's go to the top again. So we're in networking options, oh, network packet filtering framework. Missed one of the lines there. So we've got that advanced net filter configuration, core net filter configuration, net filter connection tracking support. Net filter. Net filter connection tracking support. Yes, right there it is there. Net filter X tables support. Net filter X table that's already installed. Log target support. That's in as a module. I'll leave that as a module. And then IP net filter configuration. Oh, which is under the previous menu, but it looks at IP net filter configuration. And I want to look for IP table support. So that's set as well. Okay, so there's one, only one option that needed set in there. So let's save that and rebuild the kernel. It does say that include any tracking protocols that we use as well as any protocols that you wish to use for match support under core net filter configuration. The above options are enough for running, creating a personal firewall with IP tables below. So I'm only really installing this for the package itself. Um, don't normally run a personal firewall like this, I'll leave that to the router. But there's nothing wrong with having an additional firewall on the machine itself of course okay so now let's do the install script and 
log off, reconnect as root, and reboot and log out. So that's the kernel setup. Um, so it says something there about some specialized extension libraries. And if you aren't sure if you need them, then you probably don't. But if you are sure, you can look at the install file. So once this comes back up, which will be in a few seconds, we'll connect again. Seeded sources, BLFS, IP tables, and there's probably just one other option there, maybe. Not sure what it does, but if it installs another tool, it could be useful at some point. So build it. Sorry, that done that already, obviously, and install it. And then it says there's some configuration there. Um, I'm not going to do this. Um, it looks quite straightforward. I don't really understand networking, which is why I shy away from it. Uh, so I let the the router deal with these sort of things. Only really interested in the libraries that are installed for this bit of software. So as far as I'm concerned, that's built. So back to network manager, we've got Newt. That can be installed. So GPM supports built in and Python 3. So it looks like we can just copy and paste this. And no test suite, so we'll just install it. And that's done. Next, we're on to WPA Supplicant. That's for wireless networking. Um, I've done a video recently on setting up networking wireless networking just for LFS and using BLFS where appropriate. So if you're interested in that, you can consult that those videos if you want to follow through that. Otherwise, I'm not going to set it up here purely because um, I'm on wired networking. And it's a little bit pointless, really. So I'll skip that. Um, we've got to rebuild this after QT. We look to it for some dependencies within QT. So I'll go on to Modem Manager next. Uh, so this has got a couple of dependencies. So lib mvim. Copy link address. So configure, I don't want any API documentation, so we'll leave that bit out. Make a check and we can now install it, that's okay. All I've got to install here is libqmi. So we've got all the dependencies for that. Okay. 
right, so no PI documentation to say what MBI. Right, so we did install it, so we don't need that switch. So let's just copy and paste what's in the book as it is. Okay, that's done, run some checks. And it looks like that was okay. There's a few warnings, but there's no errors. So now let's install. And that's done. Uh, so it was libqmi, we've got pulkit vava. So we're ready for modem manager now. Install modem manager with these commands. So we'll start with the configure system D suspend resume. Oh, just get top. Yep, I think we we'll just accept what's there. Okay, there's a summary of what's going to be installed with looks of it, the features. So we can just build now. and install and that's finished so that was modem manager u power next with judef usb so it looks like we've got all the dependencies for this already. Okay, what have we got here? So we've got a said make a temporary directory to build in, copy the Mesen setup command and check the options. So we can build the documentation, either remove it or set it to true. Man pages is false. Remove this if you wish to build man pages so again i'll set that to true put a little bit easier and looks like the rest of it we'll just leave it as it is now to build it and then run some tests right this actually says it should be run from a gui session as well so while that's running, I'll set that up. Uh, I guess it's either going to fail or skip some tests.
Okay, well, it actually passed all of them, so that's interesting. Test switch should be run from local GUI session. Start with DBus launch. Two tests relating to the headphone. No, there's there's none skipped. Uh, I'll run it anyway. Uh, CD build. Yeah, it's running 67 tests again, so it's not decided to run any more. Um, if anything, again, it's running a little bit quicker, possibly. But no, it's, it's slowed down now in the last few like it did before, uh, as you can see here. Uh, but no, that seems to be okay. So while that's just finishing off, I'll um, install it here. So that's finished. It's nearly done the battery state guessing test. It's going to time out in 30 seconds. Yeah, I can't see anything different to that, so I don't know what the uh, bit about the GUI session is. It may be that it just needs to see the GUI libraries or something, not actually need the session. Yeah, same before. 67 tests passed of 67 runs, so that's fine. Okay, so that's that package done new power so we should be okay for network manager to be installed now um, there's loads of options here to set which i'm not going to bother with um, i don't actually normally use network manager i find it to be quite intrusive sometimes um, but it's something they can set if you wish to so I'll copy this, paste it in and put a note to rebuild after QT. And fetch the package. So if Qt is installed, we'll skip that, fix the Python scripts, make a temporary directory for building, copy the meson setup, Let's check the options. So D docs equals true uses switch to enable the building of man pages and documentation. And I was building NM2E. There was a message about that somewhere, wasn't there? I saw OVF oh, yeah, note is needed for that. So we can add that in. So we need those because we're not running system dealer PSL. Remove these if you have the needed or required libraries installed in your system. So, oh, there's NM2 there. I didn't see it at the top. So it's libpsl equals false. So it's this one we need to remove and OVS. Then modem manager is false, but we've got that installed so we can remove that one. Session tracking login. E-login 
D, PPP false. So I haven't got, oh, this switch disables. Let me switch if you need PPP. Right, PPP, I don't think I've got that installed. That's an external package. Yeah, we haven't, and don't use it anyway. So we'll leave that one in. Lib audit and SE Linux, we haven't got that. Qt equals false. We haven't got that, so we'll leave that in crypto instead of NSS default. So it's D crypto GNU TLS. Oh, I see. So we want to leave that out because we'll use NSS. We'll leave that out because we've got NSS, so we don't need that and resume power. We can add that in, suspend resume power. Use this switch if you have your power and sort of want to use it instead of e login D. Oh, instead of e login D, so I won't put that in. So we'll keep those there. Um, what I might do is keep a copy of that for when network managers install because there was quite a lot of changing there. And just have to remember to change the QT to true. So VI dot text uh, let's put these on setup. And I'll paste that in. And save that so we know for next time. So that's the setup. Let's build it now. Uh, oh, right, okay. There was an error. Not found, try package config. MMG lib. Mobile broadband provider. That's an option. So there's another option I need to turn off then. Did I miss something? Oh, I see. Modem manager. So you need mobile provide more brand provider included as well in that configuration. So I'll have to set modem manager to false. So that needs to be added then as I've removed it now. That's better and I'd better modify my network manager. He's on setup to include that. And also, I think I'd better change QT to true because I'll probably forget about it. Right. Now I can run Ninja. So the testing says it needs a graphical manager. So I'm just going to go into this directory again and run Ninja test. And again, there's 67 tests. Well, it's done all of them except the last one after about eight seconds and it's stuck on the last one now. So it looks like I actually timed out on it. Um, 
So there was six failures. A few tests may fail depending on enable kernel options. So it's probably because I haven't set the kernel up correctly is the reason why I've got those six failures. So I'm not really too bothered about that. I'm going to carry on with the install. If you've passed docs equals true, you can install the pre-generated manual pages. So we'll do that after the installation's finished. That's done. Install the manual pages. That looks interesting. It's removed some that were previously there. Interesting. Have I already installed this then? Let's have a look at that. Net work. No, I haven't. So Um, the only thing I could think of is this, for example, this um, NMTUI. It looked like that referenced Newt. So whether that's Newt that installed the manual pages originally with the same name, that's possible. Other than that, I can't explain why it's removed some existing, only to replace them. Uh, a bit strange. Um, so now let's do the HTML files. They're done. Some configuration. So we'll copy this minimal configuration. This time allow Polkit to manage authorizations. To use something other than the built-in DHCP client, use the following configuration. Uh, so don't use DHCP, I won't worry about that. Now this is important, this is one of the reasons why I don't use Network Manager is that it can overwrite your ETZ resolve file. So I'll definitely be adding that option in to prevent that. Um, to allow regular users to configure network connections, you should add them to NetDev group and create a pocket route that grants access. So run this as the root user. Uh, oh, and I need to add in the username there. So kernel text is my user, unprivileged username. And then the remainder of the command can be added in. So let me just examine that file there to make sure I didn't trash it by having that command fail. No, it looks okay. So if I do groups on kernel text, it's now got net dev on there. So that's good. And network manager can be auto started. Like I say, I don't like the way it can be quite intrusive. So I'm not going to set the script up to auto start it. But if you wish to use it, then just go to the BLFS. Um, start up scripts, boot scripts directory and run that make install command to uh, have those scripts installed. So that is complete. I'm going to tidy that up. And I'm actually going to log out, log back in again so that I get the NetDev group active, and there it is. So that's Network Manager. And we've just got one more on Tracker Miners. This is Totem, just needs GVFS with some tests. Okay, we've got a few dependencies here. Lib secret next. And GJS is needed for the test suite. Okay, so let's do GJS next. So 
I'll fetch the package. Oh, it's got a dependency I've just noticed on GTK4, and that's what we're trying to get installed. So I think we'll have to, we'll, and it's got sysprof as well. So what I might do is uh, put a note to rebuild this after GTK4. After GTK plus dash four and sysprof. So let's it might not even build actually because it says recommended, but we'll see how we go. GJS. So let's create the build directory. And the meson setup. So we'll have to set the profile of disabled. So let's have a look what we've got here. It doesn't mention anything about specific GTK options, so Maybe okay. Yeah, that was okay. So that's okay then. Uh, Ninja test it may fail. Yeah, there's one there. I wondered if it would. So six failures. GTK3 is one of them. So that could be because GTK3 is not fully installed. Um. So they mentioned GTK4 and it's definitely not installed. So I'm going to put after GTK3 and 4. Uh, there were some optional dependencies on GTK3 that haven't been installed yet. Um, Cairo, that's interesting. Not sure why that has given an error. So I'll install it for now because it is going to be installed again. So that's GJS. Lib secret. Let's check the name key ring. So gnome keyring is something that hasn't been installed, but it's a runtime dependency. So I'll install that after this. So let's do lib secret next. So let's make the temporary build directory first. Copy the meson setup program or command rather, and check the options here. So GTK Docker falls out building this package without GI Docker install. If it GI Docker install, wish to rebuild and install the API. And meson configure command will reset this option. Okay. So we don't want the API, so we'll leave that in. Use the switch if it's not installed. So we do want the man pages. So it looks like the defaults are what we need. And run Ninja to build it. 
don't want the API documentation, so we'll just run ninja install and run the tests. All passed, so that's done. So now I'm going to install this GNOME keyring that needs GCR. So it looks like we've got all the options. So let's do this set first, then create the build directory and change into it. Then the meson setup. Now let's check what options we've got. Use this switch if you haven't installed GTK plus three. So we have got it installed to some extent. So let's set that to true. Otherwise we won't get the GCR viewer. And sorry, that's DGTK. So we'll leave that out. GTK doc. All right, so that's just for API. So the default is adequate. Let's put that back to false. And run Ninja. Well, it says the test must be run from an X terminal or similar. So I'm not, I'm not sure what similar means. Um, we've got one failure there already. I'll prepare this actually on the terminal. So it doesn't mention anything about those that don't look X related, but I'll run it on the X session. And yes, they've passed and it ran a lot quicker as well. So that's 47 it ran and 47 passed. So you can see we got 44 and three, well, two failed and one timed out. So that's a good test. Let's now run Ninja install and that's done. So back to GNOME keyring, we can install this now. Right, so there's nothing to modify here. So we'll copy the commands. Run some tests. So we've got one failure there. It does say a session bus is necessary to run the test. So maybe I need to run these in the GUI as well. So let's try that. I'll abort this. It looks like it's going to hang or it's got stuck. And I'll run make check in the GUI session. 
Looks like it's got to somewhere around the point it failed. Yeah, this is the point it failed. It's on the outstanding one. Okay, well, it's, it's failed and stopped straight away. It did say it's waiting for a D-Bus test service there, by the looks of it. Uh, so I've got one error. Um, invalid test number, it says secret lock service. It bailed out. So I'm not sure why that failed. Uh, I'll rerun it again to make sure it fails in the same way, but it looks like there's just that one failure. Um, again, possibly you need to things like this, libcap or whatever that is about. Yeah, it could be the reason why that's failed. There's no mention of anything failing. So I can only, oh, that's actually passed this time now. So whether it's a timing issue or whether there was something left over from the previous test run um, where I aborted it, um, it's a possibility. And the second time it's cleaned up and passed. So that's good enough. Let's make install. Uh, and tidy up. So that's gnome keyring, GVFS, U disks. We've got all these other ones here. Yep. Lib ATA Smart. Lib ATA Okay, so nothing to tweak here. So I'll just install that and that's done. Lib block dev. Needs crypt setup. Needs JSON C and LVM2. Okay. I thought to install JSON C, but I haven't. So let's do that one next. Jason C seventeen Oops. So there's no extra options here. We'll just install this. So we haven't got docs, Jim. We can't install the documentation. Let's run the tests. That's all good. And install. And that's done. that and uh, 
just make a tweak here. Right, so the next one I need to do is LVM2. So optional MDA, ADM, research progs, and all five may be used, but not required to test. So let's do MDA, ADM first. So I'm not going to bother setting up the kernel because I don't use um, MDADM anymore since ZFS came about. Um, hoping it won't affect anything in the testing or anything. But I'll install the package. Um, so oh, it looks like there isn't a test suite anyway, so I will build it and install it. And that's done. I don't think there's anything else. No. Um, the real reason for this actually is LVM. I don't actually ever use LVM again because if I need that sort of functionality, ZFS provides that. Um, yeah, Risa or Risa FS. It's as it says, it's deprecated. Really, it's not being supported. Um, but obviously, this package can use it while it's still available. So I'm, again, I'm not going to modify the kernel. But I will install the package just for the record, basically. Uh, so just copy and paste this. And install. So that's all the packages we need. Um, again, there's options to set in the kernel button. Uh, again, I'm not going to bother with that. I don't use LVM. So it's just going through the motions to show these packages being built and hopefully the fact that the cut oh that one there. Oh okay. The fact that um let's copy the right link. Uh I haven't built the options in the kernel, just hope there's no tests or anything that relies on those kernel options being set, which is a possibility. So let's see if there's any options to set there is. Let's copy this, check the options. Device map event daemon. I won't bother with that if it's not on the default. If you think you might need it, you can add it. What's this support for cancelling video format is required for video logical volume creation? So that's only a warning, so we can ignore that. Let's build it. The tests use UDEV for logical volume synchronization, so the LVM UDEV rules and some utilities need to be installed before running the test. If you are installing LVM for the first time, do not want to install the full package before running the test. The minimum set of utilities can be installed by running the follow set of instructions as the user. So let's do that. So do minus a su, and then as the root user, test the results. It does say some tests may hang. 
Uh, how long are these expected to take? 40 hours, so they do take quite a while. So I'll we'll keep an eye on that. Okay, there's quite a few failures there. Um, it says one pass of 411 failed, so... Um, that's uh, quite strange. Oh, it's because of the kernel, so maybe I should set up the kernel for these options um, just to get this to pass, otherwise it's probably going to be pretty useless. So... Um, I'll go to sources Linux, make menu config, and what I'll do, I'll set the kernel for all of these, uh, including dependencies, so it'll be that one and that one. So let's go through them. Device drivers, block devices, RAM block device support. So I want to set that in. In fact, I'll leave it. No, I will build it in. Multi-device driver support. Go into that one and we want device mapper support. Crypt target support. Snapshot target. Thin provisioning target, cache target experimental, mirror target, zero target, and IO delaying target. Then in kernel hacking, we want to ensure the magic sysres request key is set. Generic kernel, which it is. So that's LVM, MDM, we need to go to device drivers, multiple device drive support, RAID support, auto detect, and it says only the RAID type is desired, so I'll just select them all. And that's that one. Then we go to reset FS progs and we go to file systems and we'll select that as a module because it's deprecated. And we also have some stats and possibly extended attributes as well. Uh, and I'll set those as well, being set for EXT. 
just look and see what is best to follow what we're using so that's saved so let's build this it'll probably build quite a lot i'd imagine Okay, so now I'm going to run my install script to install that. Log out, log back in as root to reboot. Reboot and log out. So the PC's booting, got the logo, got the grub menu, and it's booting up. So we can go back in there now. Uh, not as root as kernel text, CD sources, PLFS, LVM, and can't remember if we're in a build directory or not. No, we're not. So I'm going to rerun the tests. I'll time this. And hopefully we should get more than one test passing. Um, root is required. Oh, yes, so it is. So cd minus e su. And again, I'll time that. And wait for these to finish.
Right, well that's uh, finished testing. The results are a lot better than last time, although we've got approximately a third pass, a third skipped, and we'll just have a third pass and skipped, and 62 warned and 15 failed, so it's a bit of a, a mishmash, but I'm not going to be too concerned about it. Um, like I say, it's not something I'm particularly concerned about in the first place. So, um, certainly better than it was before. Now I've enabled the kernel options. Uh, so that's the main thing. So I'm going to install the package now. And that's LVM done. So lib pw quality has that been done? Is it crap? Lib. Oh yes, yes, that's right. When we did Pam and so on. So crypt setup has got some options. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is take a break and carry on in the next session.